a hip, a hop, a hugger cast. What's up, guys? I like that one. It's very ethnic. <laughs> like, with everything going on right now, I feel like we need some good representation. You know, uh, I, I being the most ethnic man in the world, a.k.a. a long-haired white dude. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more ethnic than that. <laughs> So it's 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 your boy Colton and Derek back What's at it up? again with this. Hey guys, it's How's... it's it's the Hugger Cast. I'm your host Hugger Derek. Welcome to the Hugger Cast, uh, the only uh, podcast that can out pizza the hut. Uh, well, you know, we we had a uh, Godfather Pizza until R.I.P. Herman Cain. R.I.P. R.I.P. Herman Cain, the the father of all <laughs> what, pizza. What, what would you do if Godfather Pizza legitimately was just like? All right, we're shutting down. He's gone. We, <laughs> we can't <Sorry>. carry on. <laughs> we can no longer carry on without the cane. Uh, a man needs a cane to walk. I want that to be on his tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> a man needs his cane to walk. <laughs> America needs its cane to walk. Um, gone should, too soon. When he was running for president, that should have been his slogan. America needs like the support of their cane. Do we okay? We're rebranding Huggercast right now. We're going from comedy video game stuff. Uh, we're just a political advice podcast now. Honestly, all right. Our first, <laughs> Hit us up. Our first client, Donald Trump. Just uh, stop. Kill yourself. Yeah, that was no. <laughs> don't don't, don't actually, don't, do actually that. don't actually do it. Don't actually do it uh, <laughs> like for comedic purposes only. <laughs> do it ironically. No, but um. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah. How many episodes are we even at this right is now? Number like eight. Damn we. We've actually been doing this for a minute now. Yeah, at episode ten, we're gonna kill ourselves on stream. Oh, dude, can we? How, how are you gonna do it? Uh, I've decided to uh, to throw myself in the dryer with uh, no fabric softener. Oh, dude, you're going the fun way. I'm just uh, gonna overdose on heroin. Ah, you're going the white way, <laughs> the GG Allen way. I'm gonna <laughs> shit, throw it at you, cut myself up, and then overdose on heroin. Hmm. Sounds like a typical day for uh. Paris Hilton. Hey. <laughs> Well, oh, that you know that sounds like the jokes they would say like in old like '90s radio shows, like Howard Stern. Oh, d- you know, I never actually listened to like Prime Howard Stern, and I'm kind of sad I never never I got to. I never got to. to either. I just know that's the type of stuff they did. They're like, wow, sounds like a sounds like a Jeffrey Epstein's house. <laughs> Didn't he have a movie like called Private Parts or something? I don't know, but that sounds great. That I I think he did. I I've, I've never seen it, but I, I should watch it. Make an effort. Maybe it'll make me a better podcaster. <laughs> I wanted to to somehow uh, put my Bobby Flay impression into this, but I couldn't figure out a way how. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I forgot you said you were gonna say. I was just gonna act like nothing was different. <laughs> this is just typical dairy. <laughs> hey guys, Bobby Flay here, and today we're at the Hugger Cast, and today it's the Hugger Boys. They're gonna try to beat Bobby Flay. You remember? He I had... give up. I submit. <laughs> I submit to Bobby Flay. Ooh. My one true. My one true savior, <laughs> Bobby Flay. Do you remember that uh that Scooby Doo movie where Bobby Flay was in it? It was like Food Network and Scooby Doo. Like yes. Rachel Ray, I think, was in it, or or no, Gi- Giada was in it. Do you remember? Do you remember that brief period in high school where we both had like a thing for Rachel Ray? That was me. Uh, it's because I I had a thing when I was like ten. But yes, I remember we would talk about this. Yeah, like that was that was. Thinking back at it, that was kind of <laughs> it's kind of like, odd. Why? You know who else had a thing? Uh, Robert. Robert had a thing for Rachel Ray too. I think well, every every young boy in like the mid two thousands just wanted a piece of that. Oh, dude, that's another thing. Cause uh, heads up for everybody. The topic today is favorite childhood like media. games, yeah. movies, TV, favorite whatever. Favorite childhood media. We could also do favorite childhood crush. Ooh, yeah. Favorite childhood stuff. Although that just sounds weird. Yeah. So favorite childhood media. <laughs> favorite children. Hmm. I don't know about that one. <laughs> so do, you, uh, do, you, do you want to start? A, was there any news you wanted to get to before we get into that? Uh, before we get into our main stuff, uh, the only thing that really is happening right now that I was on my radar was Joe Rogan is he's trending. Well, he was trending on Twitter a few days ago for his comments about video games, our 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 passion, our childhood passion. Yeah, he called uh, he called gamers virgin nerds who ain't never gonna get none. And, uh, Yep. He's not wrong. I, I I take offense to that, mostly because I represent that, sir. <laughs> I felt... See, you only take offense when it's partially true and you feel it in your soul. 
Exactly. Like, ah, oh, why do you have to say that? Why do you have to make me think of that? Why do you have to point out the truth? <laughs> I kind of want to make a video about it, but I'm not too sure. I might. I'm gonna make. Yeah, a video go about for it. it. Yolo. Yeah. The only thing is just that, uh, because uh, do you know exactly? Did you ever, did you see the clip? I have not watched the clip, but you were telling me about it. Yeah, he was basically talking about uh, how video games are a problem because they're so fun and they're addicting. Yeah, and but that, you don't. And you don't unless, go anywhere, really, when you play he, video he games. Has not heard of eSports, though? I guess not, because... Those people are, like, legit <laughs> rich. <laughs> yeah, and even, like, like your your average person can go into, like, a local competition and win, like, 50 bucks, you know? You know what? Do you remember Bree from high school? She was the grade younger than us? Yeah, she does. She works for a video game company, right? I think she works for Blizzard now. Like that's crazy. That was really weird to see. Like I did not expect that to happen. But she's always posting all her like game and stuff now. I'm like, you go, Bree. Good for you. I'm gonna. She direct, was always nice. I'm gonna direct all my messages to her about how uh, Blizzard needs to make some new games. I'm just gonna direct my message to her to give me free stuff. <laughs> give me free World of Warcraft. Is that Blizzard? That's Blizzard, right? Yeah. Okay. But I think I think she's like they're partnered with Razor or something as well. She has all this Razor stuff and like, like hey Bree, can you tell the higher ups to work on the boob jiggle physics? There was that one time you sat next to me on the couch in colloquium, so you like owe me like a new PC. Hey, remember when we had that class and you were like, Hey, what time is it? And I was like, ten fifteen. Uh, it's time for you to pay me back. Even though I was wrong, <laughs> it was clearly three thirty-seven. But uh... <laughs> dumbass, I don't know how you <laughs> fell for that. <laughs> don't but, give me my shit, nerd. <laughs> but the thing about <laughs> Joe Rogan, because uh, he uh, basically, I I understand what he was. I think he was trying to say. I think he just spoke kind of like he wrong. didn't know how to word it. Yeah, yeah. I, he was. It sounded like he was talking about video game addiction. Like people yeah, it, who do it, nothing but like sit down and don't have jobs and just and play especially games. now that is becoming more and more prevalent. Like, there's a lot of dudes our age who, like you said, don't have a don't have a job. Don't like they live they live at home in the basement and they just play games all day. And it's like, no, mom, you don't understand. I'm I'm just gonna be like a elite gamer and make <laughs> a living off of it. But, but they don't actually like stream or like enter competitions or nothing. They just yeah, play they Call don't do anything. Friends. And they yeah. just play a Call of Duty. Not even like Overwatch or something, the games that actually make money for people. It's just called, not like Fortnite, you know. What what makes money game-wise? I know like uh, Overwatch, obviously, big one. I think Rocket League's actually huge. I know Smash, that, of course. Yeah, when it comes to like a lot of... Jesus Christ, I hate... I need, I need to turn off my notification sounds. Uh, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of. Oh, fighting. sorry, Mister Popular over here. I know the Creative Cloud said I have four new updates to install. Oh, well, that's, <laughs> that's not. A, I thought you just had all these people like Derek. You're so cool. What am I gonna be a guest? I'm like no, but uh, <laughs> I was a little. I was a little sad. We I wanted to have Kamar guest tonight, but he has to work at four in the morning tomorrow. That's so very early. Jesus. <sighs> it's it's a, in my job. It's either four to twelve thirty. Or twelve thirty to nine, so I get the late shift, and everybody else has to open. <laughs> Actually, I, see, I like working late shifts, kind of. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind it all because I work mostly with older guys who they all hate the late shift. Because to be fair, like they're done with their day at twelve thirty, then they just have the whole day to do whatever they want. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Which is which is awesome, but I hate waking up early. So I was like, yeah, you know, I'll I'll take the night shift. I won't complain. <laughs> All right. Did you have anything else to say about Joe Rogan? No. By, by, by the, I'm a I'm a big fan of his podcast. I love Joe Rogan. I think he's a funny comedian, and I like his podcast. You know, I, I will say though, I didn't think I had that bad of a gaming problem. Like speaking on that part until Skater XL finally came out. Ooh. That first night, I got home from work, clocked in seven hours on it, went to bed at four in the morning, woke up the next day at like nine, and played for like eight hours. <laughs> I'm a, I am, I'm addicted to this game. I'm addicted to hentai uh, dating sims. Also heroin. Oh yeah, that's a big one. That's a. Big Ma one. Makes the time pass fast. Yeah, it feels like that's why. That's why uh, seven hours feels like two minutes. <laughs> it's fall asleep for all of it. Fall asleep standing up. All right, I guess we'll get into the main topic at hand. Uh, yeah. Yeah, our favorite childhood stuff like video games, TV. Movies, whatever music, music yeah, whatever just, just we anything, whatever we liked. 
You know, let's start real early. I, I've been meaning to ask you this. I'm just curious. What is the... I mean, this isn't necessarily like something, one of your favorites, but what is your earliest memory? My earliest memory is actually, I remember when everything switched on. I was, at a, I was in, a, in the back seat of the car, in my car seat. I think I was like two, about like close to three. And mm-hmm. uh, my dad was in the, in the driver's seat. He parked in a Bill Miller's. And he was, uh, for those of you non-San Antonians, Bill Miller's is a chicken place. But he yeah, parked in, <laughs> barbe- uh, like fast food barbecue and fast chicken. Fast food barbecue and chicken. But he parked in a Bill Miller's, and like you know, how Bill Miller's it has like the big windows at some locations. Yeah, and so you could basically see outside when you're in line. So he went. And he's Derek like, saw this big titty goth girl, and I was like, "That's my purpose for living." I was like, "I'm hungry. <laughs> I need breastfeeding." <laughs> can uh, she do it, please? Can she do. It? And I was like, and my dad was like, "All right, I'm gonna go inside. I'll be right back." And he he went inside, and I was looking at him through the through the glass, and I started crying. I was like, "Dad, where'd you go?" And that was my first. Please memory. come back. That was my first. That was when everything turned on. That's a little more traumatic. I have two, <laughs> and I'm not sure which one came first because they were both similar age. Uh, the first was uh, my grandpa. He actually passed away when I was like three and a half. Oh dang! So this memory, this memory takes place of I was probably two, two and a half, and uh, my my grandparents were in the poor poor side of things. So he made me a little homemade swimming pool out of it. He had some old tires. He put them in a circle and then put a tarp in the middle of it and uh, made a little homemade swimming pool. And he had a chalkboard in there sitting with me p- playing school, teaching me the alphabet, <laughs> which for him was a huge deal because he was actually dyslexic. Oh, shoot. So I don't, I don't know if he was teaching <laughs> me right or not, but he was making an effort. And that's uh, <laughs> all the memories I have of him are really good. And the other one. Like I said, I can't remember which came first, but uh, I was standing in my crib or a uh, baby bed and my mom was playing Mamma Mia by ABBA. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. And I was kind of bouncing up and down to it. My dad's like, no, no, we got to show him something manly. And he put on <laughs> Run to the Hills by Iron Maiden. And I have I have loved metal ever since. <laughs> it's all your dad's fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he, he was... He was the one that got me into all the music that I'm into. So oh, wow, that's pretty wild. Uh, when I was a, yeah. k- a kid for the most part, like until I was about like 12 or 13, uh, I mm-hmm. listened to nothing but, uh, but like gospel and Christian music. Hey, I just like the generic Christian music, boring, kind of hate it. Gospel. Oh, that shit. Good. Jesus. Like I'll say, I know, I know people, a lot of people had issue with Kanye's newest album, but the gospel bits on it. Oh yeah, like when you get a choir Legit on a song, good. It's, it's, it sounds good. Like I, I remember oh. a specific memory when I was in third grade, uh, the teacher was like, all right, who's everybody's favorite like musical artist? And everyone was like, uh, Chris Brown and, and like, oh, Britney Spears. Just and the I was, stock mid-2000 answers. <laughs> yeah, it was like the early like st- mid-2000 stuff. And I was like, oh, Donnie McClurkin. <laughs> I don't, have you ever, do you know who that is? Uh, yeah, a little <laughs> bit. He, he's like a really popular, like, gospel singer. That's like, incredible. <laughs> I was like, I would, he's, I my loved if, he's my I favorite. I would if you would have loved, you would have said Maxwell. Max- <laughs> or like some baby making music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I love me some, uh, some, uh, I I had a bunch of baby making music in my head and I just I just blanked. Dang. Marvin Gaye. I was gonna say that I was like, yeah, I love me some Marvin Gaye or some Sam Cooke. Yeah, all right. <laughs> no, you you need a you need newer. Newer baby making. God, music? what what is his name? It's blanking on me. He's got I think the song's called Brown Sugar. I have no idea. Uh, D'Angelo. Ooh, is that some like early two thousands like R and B. Yeah, that Some like, like neo soul R and B. Like, oh, my favorite uh, artist is Mario. You remember Mario? <laughs> my my mom and daddy play the neighbors know my name by Trey songs. That's my favorite song. <laughs> That's my favorite song. I remember the first time I ever heard that was in a uh, a thrift shop with my ex girlfriend. I was like, why the hell are they playing this? This is so <laughs> like. <laughs> uh, what introduced me to other things was like whenever. I remember it was when my parents first got what we, I guess we we referred to as digital cable, which was cable mm-hmm. that was like beyond the, uh, the like one through a hundred 
channels. It, like satellite, satellite yeah, TV. Essentially satellite TV. And there was this, there was these channels in the thousands called Music Choice, and it was basically oh. like a like a radio, but on the TV. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, my like, my uh, grandparents yeah. had that. They were pretty cool, and so my mom found the '80s one. She's like, "Look, this is what I grew up listening to," and so now I know like a bunch of '80s stuff. Oh, I'm my mother. My I was gonna say mom and mother at the same time, my and mother. I just like blanked. My mother, my mommy, mommy, my mommy, mama, mommy, but. Yeah, no, my mom loves any type of 80s bubblegum yeah. pop stuff. Yeah, it bubblegum pop or like 80s hair metal. That's a lot of... <laughs> I think my dad, uh, he frowned upon that, so she did not listen to <laughs> so, it. Sorry, so I'm, I'm trying to raise a straight son. I, I'm not going to raise him on hair metal. You know, that is one thing I should have known that uh, my ex-girlfriend was not the one for me. She liked hair metal? But when, not her, but very early on I found out her dad's favorite band was Bon Jovi, and he used to drive around in a red Camaro convertible blasting Bon Jovi. Halfway there. Well, there's, there's no way that man could have been my uh, <laughs> your father-in-law. Father. Like I, <laughs> I can't, I could not respect him. Once I found That's that out, hilarious. the two years we were together, I was like, I, I can't respect this. You're like I, I sorry. Like your father-in-law, your your father seems like a nice guy, but. I don't respect him. Bon Jovi? <laughs> I have a soft spot for a few Bon Jovi songs, because I mean, it's just classic 80s, but I, I've, I've never met anyone whose favorite band was Bon Jovi. Yeah, I'm, I don't think I like a single Bon Jovi. Most of that glam rock scene, I like <laughs> Rat. I, I'll actually give Rat. Round and round. They're, they're pretty round catchy. You, you tell me you, don't like, you, you can't rock to live in on a prayer. Everyone I can hate rock that to live song in. Come with on. a burning passion. Look, look, just let let down the 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 metal the metal goggles just for like half a sec and listen to Living on a Prayer. It's not, and just it's have the thing fun with, like, with Don't it. Stop Believing. It's oh, so How can you hate Don't Stop Believing though? I don't like Journey. <laughs> how can you But what about Separate Ways? That's a great song. Oh man, funny funny song about that. I had another ex-girlfriend. I remember she had moved away, and she told me, like, yeah, this song is our song. And, uh, uh, oh, no, I'm thinking of Faith. Is it Faithfully? What's the song? Separate Ways is the other cheesy the 80s separate one. Separate Ways. But Someday it was the song about be- love will being, find you. about being far apart, but, like, still being true to each other. She cheated on me. <laughs> 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 And then your co- ironic. your song your, was, your couple song became uh, "Forget You" by CeeLo Green. That's that oh, became yeah. a song. Uh, what's what's you and your girlfriend? Do y'all have a couple song? Not. We have a we have a lot of uh, stuff that she plays, and I'm like, yeah, I can feel that. I just don't remember the names of any of it. Mm. We haven't found See, a song think, yet. I don't think we got to find one. I don't think Kaylee and I have a single song, but we have a few bands. Hmm. Uh, Power Trip is one. The band Ghost is another, which I ex- I didn't even mean to get her into. I used to be real into this band Ghost. I've seen the memes it, about how they're Scooby Doo music. Have you seen? Them? Yeah, because <laughs> the, the first <laughs> it was like one the, like the really big song, right? That sounds like Scooby Doo music. <laughs> yeah, it's the, that's the newest album. Their first two albums, awesome. Like the first one especially is actually legit, like metal sounding. Uh, the third one's still good, but the fourth one, they went a very, like, 80s, like, glam metal direction with it, so I can't, I'm not into it. I kind of uh, like the Scooby-Doo music song. <laughs> I, I, I told my, I told my girlfriend, I was like, yeah, I used to be real into this band, uh, but I'm just not into them anymore. She's like, you know, I'll listen to them. Now she loves them. <laughs> Is it, because my girlfriend's, uh, a lot of her, like, uh, teenage and middle school stuff was, like, rar. The Rar bands. Oh, y- y- yep. Yeah, Kaylee she, she loved was like, the Rar band. She was playing like a uh, like Escape the Fate and like uh, what's that other band? The Falling in Reverse. Fall Sleeping with Sirens. The stuff that me and you used to make fun of. Yeah, <laughs> that I still make fun of. <laughs> that I still, oh, no, I, I still don't pass up a chance to make fun of like garbage like metalcore. I, I've, I've kind of got over it though. Like I don't like it, but if somebody wants to like it, they're not hurting anybody. They're there, wrong, but they're not hurting anybody. There's a few early Escape the Fate songs that I can jam with. I I was there for I don't it was either them or Pier, no, it was Pierce the Veil was the other like 
The big one. Big one. They all had similar names, but I saw them at yeah. Warp Tour, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was the meme? It was a was a noun the verb or verb the noun? Verb the noun, right? Yes, verb the noun. It was all the all the metalcore like email bands had like a verb and then the and then asking the noun. Alexandria sleeping <laughs> with Cyrus. Sleeping with Cyrus. Pierce, Pierce the, veil. the veil. Eat my butt. Uh, yeah, they're. Uh, I was not into that that type of music. Like I found out my girlfriend loved uh, Avenged Sevenfold, and I. It's I one of my brother's favorite them. band, actually. My brother loves he he loves Breaking Benjamin and Avenged Sevenfold. I don't mind Breaking Benjamin, but I I cannot get into Avenged Sevenfold. I will say this about Avenged Sevenfold. Their guitarist is really talented. They oh, have yeah, a I, very talented I, I will guitarist. Never detract from their talent. Like, uh, Sinister Gates is, I think, his stage name. I don't know his real name. That guy the dude can, play. can play. That guy can play. I just don't like the music he writes. No, I I, I think the main thing for me is the guy's voice. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, a voice can like ruin a band. See, I I guess as the I've gotten into more extreme music, I view the voice almost more as an instrument. So even if it's not good, if it fits the song, I can deal with it. Yeah, but well, his I mean, voice is just. It's one of the reasons I don't like a lot of Maroon Five. Like, I don't like Adam Levine's voice. And it's such a shame. Their first album is actually. Oh yeah. It's a bop. It's Rem- the kids are saying when- nowadays. <laughs> I remember when Maroon 5 was, like, a band, and they made, like, semi, like, soft rock music, like, yeah, pop it rock. Was like, adult content, uh, yeah. contemporary Adult rock, alternative yeah. or whatever they like to call it. It wasn't bad. Yeah. And sometimes they get a little funky, too. Like, you know. I like cool. uh, in concert, they covered Highway to Hell by Maroon 5. Uh, by, by, <laughs> by ACDC, obviously. I'm, I'm just a big dumb brain. Oh, but yeah. they did a pretty good job of it. I'm on a... I'm trying to, like, imagine his voice. With that. Oh, it, they actually got, I think, the bassist to sing. Oh, yeah? Huh. Yeah, so it was a little little harsher, a little rougher. Man, now, have you seen the video of when Nickelback covered Metallica? No, is it bad? It was actually, it got a ton of, like, dislikes and all that, but it wasn't too bad. I don't. He didn't sing. They just played the, uh, like, first two minutes of uh, The Four Horsemen, and I was like, People are hating this because it's Nickelback, but like they didn't do a half bad job. They did a cover of a song, and now it's like oh, this actually isn't too bad. I oh they did a cover of Saturday Nights All Right by Elton John. It was actually kind of like not bad. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> it was, I I don't like them, but I it became such a meme to hate them that yeah. like I think I think it's probably because I will admit that a lot of their big singles I can't stand. Like mm-hmm. I can't stand well photographs a meme, but uh Rock Star Never made it as a wild man. Never made it as a wild man. Never made it, never made it as a wild man. Or, or someday I hate someday. God, I hate that song. Someday, someday, someday. <laughs> <laughs> I do miss the time when every band sang like that, though. The, the, they all heard Eddie Vedder and Pearl Jam and were like, we can do this. We can do that, but like not as good. And so you got you got Creed and you got Nickelback and you got like you got Stain got Pu- I'm on the outside. <laughs> wasn't wasn't Puddle of Mud like that too or no? Yes, they they all yeah. were like that. And was all Godsmack had- like that? I don't know if Godsmack I think Godsmack was. was just garbage. I think that's what that was. Yeah, which is a shame because they got the name from it from a great. That's a song off of Alice in Chains' Dirt. Which is a fantastic album. Are they the ones that had like uh, the song on one of the, the what movies the uh, the Mummy movies? They might have actually. I haven't watched those in so long that I don't God. know. That's class classic stuff. What was uh what was one of the first like bands you got into as a kid? Uh, Iron Maiden was definitely the first band that I was like, I knew who they were and I liked them. I remember being a. Eight years old, I just my dad had bought Iron Maiden's uh, "Rock in Rio," which is a live album from Ooh. Rio, and uh, I remember in it their, their singer Bruce Dickinson is all sweaty and just like, because obviously it's it's hot. He's singing his ass off, doing his thing. But I remember one time I was playing outside on a trampoline and it started to rain, and for some reason the I pretend, was pretended the rain was sweat and that I was him, and I was just <laughs> singing Iron Maiden songs, jumping on my trampoline at That's like seven hilarious. years old. 
<laughs> it, was the, it was one of the first bands you you remember actually legitimately being into. Oh, you know what it was? Uh, it was what? when the first Transformers movie came out. I think you know where this is going. Yeah, I know exactly where this <laughs> is they, going. And at the credits, they played What I've Done, and I was like, oh, this is sick. And it was, that's how I found out about Linkin Park, and they became the first band that I got into. Which I I, I love Linkin Park. That's That was my jam. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, and you you will still rock out to Lincoln. Park. I will still rock out to Lincoln Park. Everything except for that the most recent album. Uh, it's it's a shame that the most recent album that they made before Chester died sucked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I really I wish they had uh, gone out with like a really good album. Uh, but can't have everything your yeah. way. Like favorite bands when you're young. Though I remember I got on a. Uh, teacher's good side i was in like first grade oh yeah i was gonna i was gonna ask you to tell the story and yeah. for some reason we were always uh like he was asking us what our like favorite music was so i told him it was all just stuff i knew from my dad i was like i like iron maiden judas priest rush <laughs> and uh how old were he you was a uh first grade so whatever age like that six is. geez but uh so he, i at the time i didn't know this he was a huge rush fan he's seen him like five <laughs> times he was ultra mega nerd which uh rush is ultra mega nerd music but uh, i told him that i was his favorite for the rest of the year <laughs> that's great <laughs> uh the yeah. next the next band after after uh lincoln park was of course if you listen to this podcast you know i'm a huge blink 182 fan and yeah uh, that's uh my favorite band that was i think what got me into them was Oh, Madden, Madden 04, they had the song Feeling This on the soundtrack. You know, those old Madden games had dope all right soundtracks. soundtracks. Like, I, I don't love him, but I do love him. Andrew WK. Yeah. I don't like the music. I remember you were talking about But I love him. This. Yeah. He was on a Madden 03 soundtrack. Good <laughs> Charlotte was on a Madden 03 soundtrack. Good Charlotte. Some of that, like, early... Like mid or to mid two thousands, like I guess they called it pop punk at the time, but yeah, some of that like I don't know what to call it, but like good. They Charlotte. almost call it like <clears throat> yeah, I guess that could be pop punky. Yeah. To- speaking in that realm, do you know what band actually does? Going also going back to the conversation earlier, what band does great Metallica covers? Wait, I want to guess. Foster the people. No, no. <laughs> I would love to see that though. That's not I with his voice. Yes, I would love to see that. But uh, you, you know who? Who? Some forty one. Really? Some forty one does Metallica covers. Yeah, after, that's insane. After this, look up their uh, cover of Master of Puppets. Wow, it's some forty one. Legitimately good. Like they have chops. The dude nails the solo. The, the guys, guys that, that made Fat Fat Lip. Those. That's yeah. some forty one. <laughs> I went through this weird. I, it was weird. I didn't have any nostalgia with them. Like, I didn't listen to them growing up at all. But a few months back, I just went through a phase where I listened to a ton of Sum 41 for, like, four or five days, and then I just stopped again. I need to check them out. They're, they're like, it's classic, like, yeah, early 2000s. That, like, like, I've heard it being called uh, mall, mall Punk or Mall Rock. Yeah. That's a good I've heard. I've heard also people call it, like, <laughs> me- uh, Melodic Skate Punk. Yeah, I guess so. some of their yeah. stuff has moments where it's a little... Although I think skate punk more like no effects type stuff. Yeah. Or like stuff like uh like how Yellow Card would use violin in some of their songs. Like mm-hmm. I think it's like melodic. But going uh like like in my high school days, like when uh when I started like actually paying attention to like pop charts and stuff like that, I, I paid mm-hmm. attention I think I, I picked a really good time, it was 2011, 2012, to actually pay attention to like the pop charts. Cause that's when like the indie alternative boom was like was it yeah, is, and they they were like. getting like pop hits. They were getting on like the top one hundred. So like yeah, I, I found a lot of them were legitimately good songs. Yeah, like Foster the People's Pumped Up Kicks was like one of the first like indie sounding songs. I was like, okay, I, I can gravitate to this. Uh, their first two albums. It's a are, shame that they never they never got bigger. They, I know. Like they they're big. They got a fan base, but they could have been. They could have been huge. Yeah, yeah they could have been. I'm trying to think of what band would be a good comparison for it. Probably like Pearl Jam type level. I'm trying to think of a band that's like big right now that's like kind of in that scene, like indie alternative. Imagine like Dragons. Still. Oh, God. I made a whole video about that. I don't need to go back. 
<laughs> you please don't make me go back to the bad place, mommy. <laughs> yeah, but uh, actually, well, I will say that that uh, that first album is still really good. By by Mad Dragons. I just I I've tried getting into them. I can't do it. The first album, because like uh, like aside from the big hits, well, even like it's time is still kind of like a indie sounding song, but everything mm-hmm. that's not radioactive off the album is like it's it has that like indie alternative sound. And it's, okay. Yeah, it, and they even have, like, a Mumford & Sons sounding song on the album. It's called Rocks. Dad even has a Mumford & Sons sounding name. Yeah, it's literally, like, about uh, a guy, like, standing out a girl's window and throwing rocks at the window. He's like, I threw some rocks up at your window. And then the Mumford & Sons banjo comes out. It's like... Ding, 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 ding. I love a good banjo. I think it's just a being banjo. a white man, but... <laughs> I love but, a good yeah, banjo. So but, this has just been kind of, like, reminiscing on music, maybe. <laughs> what was the, what TV shows were you into as a kid? <laughs> um, wait, hold on. Before we go, back, I just want to talk okay, okay. like another minute about Foster the People. I oh, you're everyone, good. You're good. I just want everyone to know that their first two albums are fantastic. Uh, Torches and Supermodel, fantastic even, albums. Even so, even some of their newer work is. I, I need good. to listen like, to it. I just haven't listened to it. I need to catch up. My girlfriend is like a super fan, and she sent me some pretty catchy stuff. Yeah, like uh. Like, Don't Stop Color on the Walls, that's just a catchy pop indie song. Like, I love the that. The world needs more, more don't stop. Just catchy pop. And, like, synth pop. I like synth pop, too. There's some really good synth pop out there. We need some people to, uh, like, channel the outfield. Uh, the 80s pop band. We got Steel Panther. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're more the, uh... The comedy. I... I I love them and the, the, more like the rat poison type. <laughs> yeah, like that really like hairspray type stuff. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say I, I love them I though. Oh yeah, you know who actually makes like really really good synth pop? Who? Carly Rae Jepsen, the Call Me Maybe girl. Uh, yeah, her stuff is not. She's known for that song, but she is not she's bad. Really, really good. All right, I guess we can move on to the TV shows. Yeah. Uh, what Obviously, like, we were into SpongeBob. That, ob- we're just gonna get that out of yeah. the way. We've talked about SpongeBob a lot on this podcast, actually. Yeah, if if we talked about him more, it would just be three hours of that. Nobody wants that. Uh, we might have to do a SpongeBob cast. Just a SpongeBob deep dive. Let's just a SpongeBob explore deep the dive. lore. And 1989, Stephen Hellenberg. The ugly barnacle came. <laughs> the ugly. You ever hear the story of the ugly barnacle? Um, he was so ugly that everybody died. <laughs> you know, it's a bit of a meme now because of how long, uh, not SpongeBob, but uh, of how long it's it went and how crappy it got. But early Fairly Odd Parents was actually really funny. Yeah, the first like three, couple four, seasons were not bad. Everything before the baby, I want to say, came mm-hmm. was like top tier, like really funny stuff. You know, you know it was king of that like kind of weirdo oddball humor though. But on the Martians, yeah, yeah, me too. I was I was <laughs> never allowed to watch it as a kid because my mom hated it. But most sometimes when she was at work and I was home alone with my dad, he would watch it with me when I was like four. I think which I p- probably shouldn't have been watching it because it is a weird show. It is really weird because uh, I I know we're the same age, but I think Ren and Stimpy was a little, just a little, a few years before my it time. It was, and, yeah, because uh, uh, yeah. I'm 95, I believe you're 96, baby. <laughs> yeah, and I was like 93, so uh, 92, yeah, like early early 90s, and I never mm. caught reruns. I just I don't know, I just don't remember watching Ren and Stimpy. As yeah, you should go back and rewatch it now. It I watched a few clips, up. and it's pretty. Pretty funny. It's just so weird. It, it, and like the grotesque close-up faces they do yeah. sometimes. And that's I like a lot that. of cartoons do that now. And it feels like that's where because of them. Yeah, because of like Ren and Stimpy was one of the first really big ones. I watched a lot of Angry Beavers. My mom actually really I, liked Angry Beavers. I love their theme song. I was gonna start singing the cat song, cat dog theme song, but that's not right. Cat dog theme song was also. Being like a little kid, I was probably three or four, and I'd stay the night at my, my grandparents, not the ones I was talking about earlier, but my other set of grandparents, and me and my grandma would sleep, uh, like, my head on one side of the bed, hers on the other, so we would be facing opposite directions, and she'd be like, she'd call it cat dog, and that was, <laughs> it would get me to go to sleep. <laughs> That's adorable. Cat dog was, I had a cat dog uh, doll as a kid. 
Who was little the little fleshy. blue guy? What was his name again? Oh, uh, the rat? Yeah. How, why am I forgetting his name? I should know his name. Winslow. Winslow. My favorite thing him. in the me in, in the world is the the meme of Winslow like opening the door and then leaving. Yep. <laughs> He's like, "Hey guys, Turning what's going around. on?" Nope. <laughs> I'm out. You know what's there's this I think I mentioned this on the last podcast, but there's like you remember like the really old like 2011 2012, 2012 memes with like impact font on like a random yeah. image. The, the old, impact font with like uh when you when you the fail animals. epic fail. Yeah. The only one of those that still manages to make me laugh is the one with the mm. aliens from Scary Movie 3, and it just says, this is why we don't visit you guys, and it's like people post it <laughs> for like when bad stuff happens. Yeah, there's a <laughs> few of those old memes that I still get a, a kick out of. It's like a, that's Man. this, well, I forgot what Star Wars movie is, like, it's an old meme, sir, but it checks out. It checks out, my, uh, <laughs> that's uh, episode 6, when they're getting on to Endor. That's an old, but it checks out. Man, it's crazy how much our humor has changed, though. Just like, not not ours in particular, but just internet humor since yeah. like 2011, 2012. <laughs> Remember when Rage Face comics were a thing? Uh, why you know? Why you know? I, listen, I, there is one though that to this day still cracks me up. It's a guy walking down the street and a little kid's hanging a piece of lo- a lollipop from a piece of string, and uh, the guy goes, "What you doing, little kid?" And the little just kid goes, "Fishing for bitches." <laughs> <laughs> it cuts to the guy being like, I'm never having kids. <laughs> Some of that stuff it's, can still get a good laugh. It, it, but it's like the most stereotypical 2011. It's got the, uh, uh, you mad face. It's got the Problem. Uh, Macusta face. <laughs> I remember one time, uh, our friend Valerie, I, w- I was in, uh, we were in math class with her. I remember when we had math mm-hmm. class. That was fun. Uh, I said, why you know to her? I was like, why you know something, something? She's like, why are you still, why are you still using like rage comics? I was like, oh God. She Those memes me. died. She pwned Freaking, me. You normie. <laughs> I, my favorite uh, picture to represent like how like modern internet humor is the picture of the demon with the big hands eating cornflakes mm-hmm. and it just says cornfleck. <laughs> my favorite it's, it's like that but it's uh just a picture of like tony hawk or something and somebody just commented skimped board s-k-a-m-t-b-o-r-d <laughs> skimped board, skimped board. <laughs> do you remember the dr dre meme you made in like paint of him falling I, off I the skateboard dre, I, 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 you don't remember that it was either you was or Jacob, this, actually. Something about Dre falling off? Yeah, it was like, because there's that line in, uh, what, what's the song? Forgot about Dre. Forgot about Dre. Because everybody, everybody saying Dre fell off, and it was like a crappy, like, MS Paint picture of Dr. Dre, like, falling off, like, a skateboard or, like, a scooter or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that at all. There's a lot of stuff from that time that I don't remember. It was the drugs. So I think I think I know the answer to this, but uh, were you a Nickelodeon kid or a Cartoon Network kid? Uh, both. The only one I didn't really uh, go for was Disney. <clears throat> but I guess yeah, if, those... if, you, if you put a gun to my head and choose, it's probably Cartoon Network. Okay, that's what I thought. I was like, I know it's going to be close, but I think he's more of a Cartoon Network. Yeah. It, it, what, it, is, what is your, your favorite Cartoon Network series? Ed, Ed and Eddie, like by far. That's a good choice it, that that think, show shaped my humor because like i go back and watch it and i'm like this is still hilarious and a lot of this stuff is just the lot of humor is just really weird mm, but i love it that's why <laughs> kids today are the way they are like just the just the uh the gif of like of ed like they're they're just like there's characters in the background and ed just like sliding across the screen with his eyebrow like just yep. that gif alone is like yep that's the show. That's that's me. <laughs> or the or the episode my... uh, where they it, it really breaks the fourth wall where they like they like discover like they don't discover that they're cartoons but they're like trying to figure out how stuff is built and they like take mm-hmm. Jimmy's outline his like outline off and like he melts and goes into the sewer. <laughs> yeah, it's I I don't think I've seen that episode. There's just a lot of fourth wall breaking too, like. Uh, like uh, when Eddie's talking about something, he's like, hey, didn't we win an Emmy for that episode? There's just a bunch <laughs> of stuff like that. <laughs> I, I love, I think my favorite, I, I liked Ed and Eddie, but I think my favorite uh, Cartoon Network was Regular Show. Re- oh, that was, uh, that got me out of my, like, because I used to be like, oh, 
90s kid, everything from the past, like, 2004 sucks. It's better. Yeah. <laughs> every, every No, no, I, I meant, like, I thought you said everything from the past is better. Yeah, everything, past, everything and, past 2004 sucks. Yeah, but yeah. Reg, regular show, like, I know everybody loved Adventure Time, and I, I liked Adventure Time, but regular show was... Yeah, that's what got the real LOLs out of me. Those two cartoons like brought me to be like, oh hey, maybe some modern cartoons can actually be like really funny. Yeah, I want to watch that new show that uh JG oh, Quintel uh, did. What is it called? Uh, it's on HBO Max. I don't remember. Yeah, the name I have of Max. It. I should watch it. I think it's called like like Almost Time or something like that. It's yeah. It's, I know it's a two word yeah. phrase, but I don't know what. Hold on. We use the power of the internet. No, nah, that's cheating. Yeah, that's fine. JG Quintel. Oh, close enough. Close enough. That's <clears> it. <throat> I haven't seen it, but it looks funny, and I like I like JG Quintel's voice acting because it's just his voice. It's mm-hmm. just his regular mm-hmm. talking voice. But like Patrick Warburton in every role he's ever done. Yeah. Although I saw an interview with him, uh, there's different levels of the Patrick Warburton voice. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know. Was it that like him reviewing people? Yeah. And, uh, I watched that too. The reviewing impressions, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, there's like different levels of Patrick Warburton. Yeah, it's it's real subtle too. Like yeah. you would not notice it until like he says something. You're like, oh damn. Yeah, like there's uh there's uh Joe Swanson, but there's also like was that guy from the Venture Bros? Uh, oh, uh, Brock. There's Brock Lesnar, not Brock Lesnar. Uh, Samson. <laughs> Brock Lesnar's the WWE, right? Uh, yes. Okay. You know what? A lot of people have like memories of WWE. I never watched wrestling. Oh, I, I loved it as a kid. I, Whenever Stone Cold <clears throat> would come out, I only I only know like the really uh, the really famous ones like John Cena, Stone Cold, and like The Undertaker, The Rock, The Rock, the 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 famous movie star Dwayne the Rock Johnson, of course. Ah, cracked me up not too long ago is a. Uh... Even though he's retired from wrestling, he'll come back every once in a while Stone Cold will. And me and my dad were both huge fans of his. So every once in a while, my dad will tune in just to be like, what's going on in the wrestling world now? And uh, I was over at my parents' house watching it with him. And uh, the show was over because it was like an anniversary one. It was like their 25th year or something. And he's like, I guess they're not going to have Stone Cold on. And the credits are starting. And then... The Stone Cold Glass Shatter comes and comes out. The <laughs> da, 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 da. And my dad is a 50 year old man, legitimately jumped off the couch, was like, Yeah! <laughs> that's and awesome. I'm not going to lie, I did the same thing. Yeah. That's how you know you're getting old. Uh, I love Stone Cold. <laughs> Isn't it? He's actually got a really funny podcast, too. Really? We, you know what? We got to yeah. get him on. I'll home. do it. He was he was on Hot Ones not too long ago. You know what? Michelle Obama has a podcast now. I have not listened to it of you. Nope, but we got to get her on. <laughs> Michelle <laughs> Obama, could you please uh, bring hey, your hey, husband and just hit up the hooker cast? Tweet it's at, for the good of at humanity. Barack Obama. Hey, what's your wife doing? <laughs> you, With no have context. You listened, have you ever listened to the Sleepy Cabin podcast? No, I need to. I need to. <laughs> There's one that cracks me up where they're like, what do you think Obama Googles? And uh, Psychic Pebbles just goes, (laughs) Michelle Obama naked real. (laughs) (laughs) That's what what Barack Obama search is. (laughs) She just walks into his room and just sees a picture of her on the computer. He's like, oh, honey, nothing. Uh. The fact that it wasn't just Michelle Obama naked, <laughs> but Michelle, Michelle naked Obama real, naked real. Not the fake ones, of course. <laughs> you know who uh, else has a podcast now? Who? Jeanette McCurdy from iCarly. Is it good? I haven't listened to it, but she started. Got to get her on. Did you ever uh, Did you ever watch iCarly? I, yes, I did. I've seen most episodes of iCarly. I know everybody loves it. Like my My friend group, your friend group. Our yeah. shared friends. I like, was, everybody loves it, but I never there, watched it. There was actually some pretty good jokes in the show. It was actually, a lot of those like '90s Nick mid-2000s, sitcoms, like Drake and Josh. Oh, Drake and Josh. Drake and Josh is legitimately still funny. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Uh, my brother actually, my older brother actually got me into like Big Time Rush. 
Was it's, that good? Uh, probably not, but I liked it. <laughs> that was me with the sweet life of Zach and Cody. Yeah, I know a lot of people I like uh, the sweet life. I I never got a chance. I just wasn't a Disney kid, so I just didn't watch it. It looking bad. You know, it never got huge, but the one I loved was Zeke and Luther on Disney XD. You sent me a video about how uh, was the guy was talking about how Zeke the, Zeke and Luther and like race relations. I never got <laughs> yes. a chance to watch it. Oh please do! It's <laughs> hilarious. I will. Uh, and you know what else? Uh, Victorious. I watched a lot of like those mid two thousands, like I used early two thousands. Crush on Victoria oh. Justice. She was pretty, but I used to have a huge crush on Elizabeth Gillies, the goth girl. Of course. Mm-hmm. Oh, goth <laughs> girls. Are, you know who I'd crush on, like, goth girl-wise? Raven from Teen girls. Titans. Yeah, yeah. Me, uh, Mine girls. was uh, Raven from Teen Titans when I was... I, I could absolutely see that. I was Especially, like, uh, like, OG Teen Titans, not Teen Titans Go. No, that's just, I don't know. Where she's just the dark and brooding. Yeah, I was like, just step on my throat. Speaking of, like, we're, we're talking <laughs> about childhood stuff. This has nothing to do with it. But uh, do you remember the movie Max Keeble's Big Move? We're talking about Drake yeah, and Josh. Uh, yeah, I, I watched it, it. And uh, I, uh, the only thing I remember about it is when my mom took me to the theater, she's like, yeah, can I get a three for Max Keebler? <laughs> the Keebler Elves. The Keebler I used Elves to movie? love that movie. I, I don't, don't know remember. why. I don't remember a lot about it. It's a very just cheesy, exactly it what was, you would expect. It was like one of those early two thousands kids films, or with mm-hmm. people like liar, like Big Fat Liar. But Big Fat Liar was, was pretty funny. The, Big Fat Liar actually holds up. Like you They're know, like, Agent Cody Banks. Agent Cody Banks, Big Fat Liar, Clock Stoppers. <laughs> spy kids snow day yeah spy kids Man, why, spy kids are awesome i love spy kids well, spy kids too especially uh yeah. steeple shimmy did did not have to go that hard for that Do you movie think god stays in heaven because he too he, fears what he's created <laughs> like that for a children's movie <laughs> it's like what deep. you're like huh I'm, As I'm a kid. I had no like, idea. I, I, I don't like, know what right. that means, but sure. But watching now it just fills me with this like existential <laughs> dread. And you start to think you're like maybe, maybe Steve Buscemi. I love. I just love Steve Buscemi. <laughs> I need he's a cool to, dude. I need to watch more Steve Buscemi like movies. The Big Lebowski. Yeah, he's in it. I need to watch that one. Uh, I I will recommend that movie anytime, always, forever. Did you have any other like uh, TV show like crushes? Um, who was the first, for some reason, I didn't watch your show, but I used to have a huge crush on Hilary Duff. Oh, that's uh, Lizzie McGuire, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Uh, I used to have a crush on uh, Carmen from the George Lopez show. Mm. <laughs> you know, you know what movie, I think I might have said this on the podcast, but uh, my sexual awakening was Jasmine in Aladdin. And the scene where she's wearing red. Ooh, Ooh that made little like four year old court. You're like, Colton. something's something's going on here. I don't know what it is. I was, but... I was horny and I didn't know I was horny. <laughs> uh I think I think my awakening was Raven from Teen Titans. I was like, I I don't know what it is, but You should make I, my crotch feel funky. She do something and I, I I just wanna I wanna stay in that giant tea with you. That giant tea house. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh if you need a roommate, just hit me up. Hit me up at at Hugger Derek. At the time, so I was like seven, and I was like, "Hit me up at Hugger Derek." I love all those memes now of like, I can't believe at twelve years old, I really shaved my coochie before the Jonas Bros concert, thinking that they were gonna pick me. Oh yeah, I saw that. I was like, "Oh God, I don't want to know about that." <laughs> that cracked me. Up. <laughs> that was pretty funny though. Yeah. Uh, good times. So what, what 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 games were you super into? I I've mentioned this on the podcast, but I absolutely love the Sly Cooper games. I I know your love for in the the Dragon Ball games. You were obviously oh in love my god with. and Naruto the the original. I've, I've, I've we had a whole rant about it. The original Naruto Ultimate Ninja games on PS2. Some of the best 2D fighters. Maybe not the first one. The first one didn't age so well. But every two through four. We didn't get five because five was only in Japan. But two through four, like, still hold up as just some good 2D fighter games. I'm surprised. Have you, have you tried importing it? I, I wanted to try importing it when I was, like, 14. 
But uh, I should probably... I would have to get a Japanese PS2 as well, I think. Oh, that's yeah. right, because it is... I love the systems that aren't region-locked. It's th- not super common, but... I think region coding is so stupid. I'm like, why? Yeah, it's like... What does it matter? I'm still buying the game. You're still getting my money. Yeah, especially for movies. Like, that's that's stupid, too. It's like, sorry, I need this Japanese Blu-ray player. It's like, what? wait, what? It's, it's yeah, it's a movie. Like, I can not... stream it right now with no problem, but I actually <laughs> but physically I... <laughs> own it, and I can't watch I it. I want to get some exercise in by getting up, getting the DVD, putting it in. Ugh. You know what? Uh... Hitting the close tray button. That was one of the reasons we, my parents actually picked getting a PS2 over the other choices because of oh, the DVD player. That was one of the biggest selling points of it. Yeah. I it, just I was a Nintendo fanboy, so I told my grandparents, I was like, I want a GameCube. And then I later learned that that choice that my parents made was the same choice that all the other parents made, and it killed the Dreamcast. Which is a shame, because <laughs> the Dreamcast had potential. Yeah. But... And games. Lots of games. Yeah, good ones. Sonic Adventure. Yeah, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. Yeah. Night. Oh no, Knights is a Saturn original. Yeah, that one's Saturn. Uh, I think the original Yakuza was for Dreamcast, right? Yes. And wasn't <clears throat> is it Shenmue? Shenmue is, that the is name like of a it? big deal. Like it's like like a cult. It's like a cult game. Yeah. Not everybody loves it, but the ones that do are like. It got that crowd- is their game. It got crowdfunded for a sequel, uh, Shenmue Three, I think. Yeah, and it it came out, and it was exactly Shinmu Three. Was it good? Some people loved it because they're like. If you like one and two, you'll love it. But then a bunch of people are like, they didn't update anything. Like, it doesn't mm. feel modern. It feels like a game from 2003. It feels like Shenmue. Which is why some people, like, loved it and some people hated it. That's interesting. But, uh, but speaking of, like, lots of games, the PS2 showed to have lots of games. You, yeah, I, <laughs> I am jealous. I feel the GameCube had some really high quality games. Oh, yeah, for sure. But just in terms of library size ps2 is insane but hey did the gamecube have lt grade the game for ps2 i don't think so no but we had uh tie the tasmanian tiger or whatever it's called i want to say that was for everything <laughs> i know <laughs> yeah they they uh, re-released it on switch yeah i saw that wide screen I get it. yeah i've seen i've seen a lot of people like uh Oh, this is great. And then people like they didn't add any quality of life improvements. This sucks. I think they literally just made it like widescreen. Yeah, that was I think the only difference. The Switch is so odd when it's with its choices of what games are coming to it or getting ported. Yeah, I <laughs> Are there any are there any upcoming games you're excited for? For Switch or just in general? Just in general. Uh, we've talked about this before, but of course the Tony Hawk remake. Mm-hmm. I I just finished paying off Lego Star Wars: The Skywalker Saga. So oh, what is that? What is it, that official release date? I have no idea. I asked the uh, the GameStop employee. I was like, "Hey, when does it come out?" They're like, "There's no release date." I was like, "Cool." Uh, so I just paid all that money. <clears throat> I don't even know, what, know I, what I'm getting. I don't in. even know what I'm getting the game. Uh, Crash Four. Crash Four or is it Crash Four right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Crash Four is that out yet? No. no. And it's I, coming out soon, though. And I'm very intrigued about Cyberpunk. I I want to get it, but I feel like I'm just going <clears> to <throat> get lost. It's going to be too overwhelming, and I'm yeah. going to stop playing. You're either going to stop playing or stop living. Yeah, <laughs> and I can't, I can't afford to either get that sucked in. <clears throat> yeah. Even though I, I've done that with Skater XL. <laughs> And and then I'm also uh, excited for whatever DLC comes to Smash Brothers later this year. Oh, Waluigi better be there. I'm gonna cry. Wah, wah. Man, spe- like childhood. Going back to childhood stuff, though, we should just turn this into an Eric Sparrow hate podcast. <laughs> this is the third podcast we've mentioned our hate for Eric Sparrow. <laughs> it's just so easy to hate. <laughs> He's just such an evil man. He is always on my mind. He he lives there rent free. <laughs> he is the reason I lose sleep. I wake up in cold sweat and think about when he stole my video footage and doctored it to make it look like himself. Let me twist over the helicopter was me, dude. <laughs> I know. Uh, I, I yeah, I'm gonna say an, a controversial opinion. I think Mar- I love Eric Sparrow. I love Eric Sparrow. He's I'm when I was a kid, I was attracted to no, but uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think American Wasteland, I like it better than Underground, I think. I would have agreed with you when I was like 14. Going now, I I like Underground more. But I know a lot of people say that Wasteland is when the series started going downhill. I think it's just as like I think Wasteland the same level is as, a fantastic game. It's it's fun. Like the add in the BMX and all that, like No load times because you would you would skate through the uh, the levels. If you were on three sixty. Uh oh no no GameCube did that too, but it was PS2 did as well. Like there wasn't yeah. there wasn't any load yeah. times. You you have those halls though, which are Technically, Just, the load times. Yeah, load screens, but they give you stuff to do. Yeah, and that's that's you know what's interesting. That's how a lot of uh, a lot of other games do that too. Like when the like your game stops for your character to like walk through like a place. That's the game. Yeah, it's, it's a loading. short. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot shorter, know, obviously now. But I know Ghost of Tsushima apparently like does that when you die. The animations long. But because it's a long animation, it gets everything like pre prepped, and then you're like back in almost immediately. That's pretty cool. I, you know what, uh, what was my favorite thing in uh, American Wasteland? What? Uh, making a black emo uh, as my main, as my as my O's. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's another crush. Jesus. I had a, I had a crush oh on her yeah when I was like twelve. And then at the end, when you kissed her, I was like, ah oh, yeah. yeah. She had a punk rock like skating magazine. Like yeah. I, ooh. she had. Mm. That was, oh, uh, but I I always made a, a black emo character. I made I made him black, but I gave him like the the skater emo hair. Mm, I always did like just the longest hair possible. <laughs> I always wanted to look like a like Tony Alva in the game. <laughs> uh, that game was just so fun. Like you could just do so much stuff. That's just for me that game, but skateboarding games in general. I yeah. just. I could get sucked into it because you just kind of do whatever. You could try a line, try a trick, try to do the stupidest thing possible. Like it's just they're just fun. I think we need to to speak more because we we mentioned it in the other podcasts. I think with Robert, we need mm-hmm. to speak more about NBA Ballers of uh, Phenom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, I I didn't ever own it, so I could not play it that much, but. It's what I've played. I love it. The open world sandbox basketball game. This needs to be a thing. I don't know why there wasn't another game made that way. Uh, I mean, uh, 2K kind of has that like free roam playground thing when you play the my character. Oh, yeah? Is that a thing? It's not the same. Yeah. You walk around like a hub world online with other players and you can like do challenges. I haven't played 2K in a while, so. Oh hey, speaking was... of two K, did you hear the news? What? Uh, you know how uh the uh, EA had a like an agreement with the NFL that they were the only ones that can make sports games. Yes. Recently, they came to an agreement. Uh, I think for two K games, they can start making NFL games again. Oh. Yeah, I bet EA is crapping their pants. That is fantastic because NFL two K. One of them five. will get it right. Is one, one of, of them the, will get it right. Yeah, because because uh, when I was telling my brother, I was like, EA has kind of just been sitting on the throne of mediocrity for the past fifteen years. Mm, for the past since fi- they wiped out the two K series. Yeah, and the last two K was in two thousand four. It was two K five. So the past fifteen some odd years, they've just been like, ah, oh, we can really do whatever we want. We don't really have any competition. Mm, all right, that is that is good because I. I love a sport game every once in a while. Yeah, I believe from what I read, they're going to put it out as soon as next year. I'm praying that it's good. If NFL 2K21 or 22 comes out, and it's like... Because do you remember playing NFL 2K5? Yes, my that dad was, owned it. Oh, you could have the, the crib. The crib. Mm, you can make your house. Just, and It was so much more fleshed out than uh, it was just, Madden yeah. was. It wasn't just a simulator. It was like a game. It was like a video and game. Madden tried doing that a little later on, but they could just never do it right. Yeah. And playing like playing against the celebrities, do you remember that? You could play yes. a football against Carmen Electra or Steve-O. I just <laughs> want to kill Carmen Electra in the game. Not in real life, She was but annoying in, the game, in that game. Like... Oh, anytime you would miss something, she'd be like, wow, you suck. You're like, I know, you don't have to remind me about <laughs> Tell me enough every day. I was like, I just want Carmen Electra to suck me. Hmm. <laughs> so, so what? Uh, what other things from your childhood 
did you uh were you into? Uh let's see. Well, if we're going to go, I was actually going to go on a tangent about the street, uh, the NBA street games. Oh, yes, yes, please do. <laughs> the Or N- NBA and NFL street. I never got to play FIFA street. Apparently that was the thing. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty much the exact same thing, but with soccer. But, uh, I, but I, I've I, never been a huge soccer fan, so. NFL, I think it was NFL street volume two where you could like run on walls. Yeah, and, and you, like backflip off of them yes. and stuff. Yes. It was real, like N- NFL players, mm-hmm. oh, just doing crazy, just cartoony doing dumb shit. stuff. It was like so fun. And then NFL Street Volume Two. Oh my dude, oh, I, that was one of the best basketball games in the world. I know a a friend of mine that lives down the road still has an original Xbox with that game, and I went o- over there probably about a year ago now. But we played that for a while. That it holds up. It is still fun. We need to play some PS2 together. I would love to do that. <laughs> Star Wars Battlefront 2. Games we loved as a child. I love Star Wars Battlefront. I think this is just turning into like our uh, our licensed games episode. <laughs> a little bit, but... A little bit, but... Uh... Star Wars Battlefront. I have so many memories. of Just going over to number one podcast fan, Jacob. Going over to his house and playing that with him for hours. And then mm-hmm. going outside and skateboarding oh, and drinking yeah. Mountain Dew and eating pizza. <laughs> Those are the good old days, man. The whitest kids of all time. <laughs> I've seen like the meme of like all the little white kids around a computer. It's like when your stepdad goes out and you invite your friends over to look at some boobies on the computer after playing <laughs> Tony Hawk's Underground. <laughs> God, that uh, <laughs> that is shockingly accurate. <laughs> uh, when you boot up Soul Calibur and you stare at Ivy's boobs. Oh, I, I remember I had, for, uh, as I said before, I was the Sonic Autist child. So, uh... Ruse the Bat? I, uh, no, not that, but I <laughs> told my, uh, one of my cousins that I really wanted to play Sonic Jam, the uh, Saturn compilation. Oh, yeah. It was the first one with a, like, 3D, a 3D Sonic, Sonic in it. 3D Sonic, yeah. And I didn't know it, he just happened to have an old Saturn laying around, oh, so he gave it to me. And uh, there was the, the Virtua Fighter game. Mm, and one of the yeah. girls, uh, when she would kick, you could see her underwear a little bit. So I'd play that game, and I would just kick and <laughs> kick, kick, kick and kick. Uh, it's these horrible po- uh, these polygonal, polygonal like, underwear. <laughs> mid-90s 3D animation underwear. But, man, that was, uh, that was some hot stuff. Or uh, Princess Peach in Melee whenever you do your side attack and she'd lift her, her dress up. Skirt a bit. Yeah. Yep. Oh, God, days. I do not miss being that horny. Yeah. <laughs> it was a. Uh, it was something. It, anything would set you off. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like you play, you literally just sit there and you're watching a movie and like two people make out and you're like, oh. Uh, I need I need to go to my room now. I need right alone now. time. I need alone time. Or I will explode. Yeah. I remember one time in my uh, my college dorm. One of my friends was telling me, he's like, yeah, so uh, I needed some alone time. I basically just texted my roommate was like, hey, can I borrow the room for like 20 minutes? I really just need to like jack off. <laughs> Dang, I was, you said friend, but for a minute I was hoping it was going to be Peter. Oh, God. No, not Peter. <gasps> Peter! Oh, Peter! Uh, for those of you that, well, none of you know, uh, my first semester at college... When I stayed at the dorm, I had this roommate. His name was Peter. He was a New Yorker. He was quiet and very rude. Uh, you hated him. I and hated You tried that man. so hard to be friends with him. Yeah, I would, would just try to talk to him and be like, hey, what's up, man? What's going on? He's like, oh, good. He would shut you down. <laughs> uh, I remember the only time I... Uh, I got him to leave the room was when I brought a girl and I, I sat on my chair and she sat on my lap and he just, and he, got, he, he just left. He's like, I I can't do this. <laughs> uh, I remember the one time he was like, oh, I got I'm going to have to go home for the weekend. I was like, yes, I remember that weekend. Yeah. You I were s- so hype. I was, I slept naked. It was great. Oh, that is, that is the best thing about being on your own. It's just like, uh, Little little secret to the uh, podcast audience. I am legitimately naked right now. Are you really? <laughs> yeah, I do. I'm naked <laughs> all the time in my room. 
Uh, you know what? I feel like I just have to wear clothes because I'm so used to recording with the uh, the camera. Oh yeah, no, I I totally get it. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm like... just a lazy slob. <laughs> oh god. Got That's home from work. Uh, visited with Jacob and Jay for a little bit. Then uh, I was like, all right, gotta go record now. Let's Walked get into naked. my room, closed the door, <laughs> closed instantly, like onto the ground. <laughs> Do you uh? <laughs> Did you ever like when your uh, your family like first got a computer? Do you remember like your first like websites you were like really addicted to? Cheat Code Central. Cheat Code Central, my man. I that was the first website I remember going to. That printing out cheat codes. And then a little later on, uh, do you remember about dot com where they I just don't, would have a page no. about? It was like a, a learning kind of website where they'd have a page on basically everything, and uh, they'd hire s- experts to uh, write for for that page. And there was one about skateboarding that I would go to like every day. It sounds familiar, but I, I don't think I ever. I remember when I first discovered YouTube. Actually, I do. I I was at my cousin's house. They had high school way before I did, and my cousin being like, "I want to show you something on YouTube." It was like. 2006 i was like uh what's a youtube youtube yeah i remember i was at the library and i ran into my cousin and like i was on the computer because i used to my daddy used to take me to the library all the time when i was a kid and uh, mm-hmm. i would just go on the computer and just play games and oh I, I, I love library computer games yeah when i ran into my cousin he's like yeah you ever hear of youtube i was like youtube he's like yeah man let me tell you a secret uh you could type in whatever dirty stuff you want into youtube and it'll come up, and I was like, dirty stuff. I was like 10, I was like, dirty stuff. This is incredible. So I looked up video games. <laughs> hot, hot video game hot. women. You're like, hot, soul caliber, dead or alive, beach volleyball. Princess Peach, Princess <laughs> Daisy, real. a role play scene. Nude real. <laughs> <laughs> Princess Peach naked real. Naked real. I need this. Oh God, good times. Those were fun oh. times, man. But I remember some of the first people that I subscribed to. Like I subscribed to uh, this one guy that reviewed games. I think it was a. It was a. His name was Spax Three. One of the first game reviewers I ever uh, subscribed to. I wonder if he still does stuff. I found him. Let's uh, get him on the podcast. Let's get him on the podcast. I know. I found everyone. It turns out he became a meme because he was a bit autistic, like in the real sense. Oh, like, like like a Christian. Yeah, not 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 Christian, but like just a little bit. Yeah, no, I know. I <laughs> I, I just and like uh, overplaying it. He started drama with like a lot of other people. You remember Big Al Two K Six? Like one of the first like ranting channels on YouTube. Like OG. I don't. Like he's OG like ranting. Like rant videos were big. You remember when rant videos were like? Big? I I used to love rant. Videos. Everyone used to rant like, yeah, this is my Sonic the Hedgehog rant. Oh, Even was... uh, like the angry video game nerd, oh. he himself was already a ranter, and he had that uh, you know what's bullshit series. Uh, you know he brought it back. He he's doing it I, again. I, I saw. I'm that. so happy. That was my favorite. I I just I don't even really watch his stuff anymore. But he seems like a legitimately just nice, good dude. Yeah, he's just such. He's like he's got a family, and he just every now and uh, every few weeks or so, he just dresses up like a nerd and cusses and cusses at a video game. <laughs> and he's still relevant. Like he's his videos still, still get a ton of millions, views. and they're funny. Everybody still loves him. Like I, I, I'll watch it, support him. I'm like, you know, you, you're a good dude. I'll give you. I'll watch so you get ad money. Yeah, I, re- I found him early on in sixth grade. A friend of mine. Uh, you, you, do you remember? Uh, he was his name was Quentin Quentin Cerna. Yes. Yeah, he showed me angry video game nerd in sixth grade. And then you're like, no, 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 Quentin. <laughs> this is that like bullshit pussy stuff. I rate gamer I rate all day, ga- bitch. <laughs> I found the I rate gamer at the same time too, and I was like, I like both these guys. I don't see the beef. <laughs> oh, uh, to be that young and naive. Yeah, I was like, I don't understand. He's not a clone. I like his videos. They're fun. There's nothing alike. One says diarrhea dumps, and the other says butthole the shit. The other one says poopy poop. Nothing. <clears throat> and uh, nothing alike. And then I remember when uh, Angry Video Game Nerd and Nostalgia Critic did, like, their crossover, and that's how I found mm-hmm. the Nostalgia Critic. Oh, yeah, I remember you were real in the Nostalgia Critic for a while. I still watch his videos, like, every week, like, his new ones. 
are, are they actually good? It, it depends on what type of nostalgia critic fan you are. There's a deep lore in these things. Whether you like <laughs> the nostalgia critic lore, <laughs> the fandom is like split because like his old videos are like fifteen to twenty minutes. His new ones are kind of like 30, 40 minutes long. And Doesn't a lot of them do like way more skits. And yeah, stuff a lot of now? them are like skits. And like some of the skits are funny, I think. Some of them, I'll admit, are a little bit too long. But some of them, yeah, I think, I, are still funny. I know a lot of people don't like them, but I don't, I don't want, I, I've never actually really watched him, so I can't give an honest opinion. But I will admit, he was completely wrong about the Jungle Book remake. That movie's good. Is it? It's really I, good. I never watched it. Uh, all those remakes, I was like, I don't want to support Disney for this. I don't either, but the ones that ended up being good were that one and Christopher Robin. I love Christopher, Christopher Robin. Robin. I did go see that. It's just a good movie. Me and the uh, the Alpha Chad Micah saw it together in theaters as a roommate date, and we both almost cried. <laughs> I saw it with our friend uh, Emily. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And some guy named Daniel? One of her friends. That name sounds... I think I've heard her talk about him before. Yeah, pretty cool. And then we went to go to Danny er, IHOP. It was fun. I, was it the IHOP by your work? Yes. I can't go there anymore because I had a <laughs> real bad experience there one time. What happened? Just a rude waitress. Like, she was cussing a bunch. Oh, my there God. There was this uh, group of girls, to be fair. They were They were overweight. Mm-hmm. But uh, they apparently left her a bad tip, and she comes up to my table. She's like, those whales over there didn't leave me a damn thing. <laughs> and I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I I understand that that probably wasn't the best time to say it. But after a few months of bartending, I understand the frustration. Oh, yeah. No, it, was, uh, <laughs> it was hilarious, but I was just That's like. That's great. Why would you tell another customer that? I remember one time I, in college, me and like it was the it was a dorm uh, trip, and mm-hmm. uh, it was like eleven or twelve of us, and uh, the this guy was on it like our IHOP uh, waiter he was on mm-hmm. it he's like here's your food bum 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 he's this really cool black dude really nice, uh, and we all everyone tipped him like five to ten dollars. You remember that time that you went on a party bus even though you don't drink you don't do drugs <laughs> like you were a pretty straight edge dude. And they convinced you to go on a party bus. I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. I'll check. Yeah, I'll check it out. I, I remember after that, <laughs> you seemed truly disturbed. You're like, what I saw on that bus was pure debauchery. <laughs> yeah, because I was just, I saw some girl like drunkenly fall over into my lap. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to be you, here. You were really like. I was depressed. It, it hit you hard. I was like, damn, I didn't. I knew you weren't into that scene, but I didn't know it was like really not into that scene. <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, this is nope. <laughs> uh, you learned though. You it was an experience that you had. And now, now, now you know I know. You don't like it. Now I know for sure. I'm just like, and even now I'm just like, yeah, let's. You y'all yeah, want to just go to IHOP? That's fun, right? Ah, uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I I like IHOP. I've been to yep. pancakes. I've been to pa- I used to hate pancakes, but I've been into them lately. I love pancakes. Mm. Mm. That IHOP, the uh, like the butter pecan syrup they have. Oh, the, yeah, my my man, that's the best. Syrup. That stuff is delicious, and their blueberry one ain't nothing to laugh at either. I feel like when it comes to food, we have a pretty similar taste. Honestly, yeah, like <clears throat> we, we vibe. Except the the ranch on pizza. I was gonna debate. say you're. It's okay to be wrong, but. Yeah, I know you. You are so it's, <laughs> it's okay. Our, it's okay as I long st- as you I know still your ex- fault. I still accept you as a good friend of mine and my co-host, even though you're wrong. And it's all right. No, it's, it's, I went through a, about <laughs> three months where I was like, "Oh, you know what? Pretty good. I like it." And then one day I was just like, "Wait, no, I don't actually like it. I just want a <laughs> pizza with nut, just cheese, pepperoni, and sauce." Just in case I didn't explain, we didn't explain this well enough. Uh, no, we gotta leave it for the audience to, get. <laughs> to figure it out. Uh, I like ranch on my pizza, and Colton does not. My girlfriend is on your side, though, so she will legitimately get. I remember one time we went and got something, and she asked for ranch, and they forgot. I have never seen her more upset. It was a little <laughs> scary. I don't get upset, but I'm like, I call him back. I'm like, hey, yo, uh, can I get like a thing of ranch or something? Like with my well, fries, we, bro. Oh, we had, we picked it up as a to go order. Was the oh, thing. Oh, 
Where'd you guys and go? We were Where dumb- was it? Uh, McDonald's. She went oh, for the nuggets. The nuggets. Oh. So uh, we didn't check. We, we we just didn't think to check before we got home. We got home. She looked at the bag. No ranch. <laughs> that no hurts. sauce of any type. I was afraid to be in the same room as her. I was like, I might end up dead. <laughs> she just goes, Colton, leave the room. You're like, okay. <laughs> I need to be alone with my thoughts. <laughs> You come back, your TV's broken, your lamp's, like, shattered on the ground. You just hear this, like, ear-piercing demonic howl. <laughs> Not even, like, a girl scream, just... <laughs> uh, I bet the audience is gonna love bet- that. You know what? I'm surprised they both have girlfriends. I... I am too. I don't know how my girlfriend likes me. Me but... neither. I always tell my girlfriend that. And my girlfriend's like, you're cringe, but I love you. You're the fun cringe. Exactly. I'm the good cringe. Speaking of uh, the going back to childhood, what were some of your favorite places to eat as a kid? Uh, I loved Pizza Hut as a kid, even though now I actually cannot stand Pizza Hut. <laughs> you're but a pizza as snob. A kid, as a kid, I loved it. But see, I, I can eat other fast food pizza no problem. Just not Pizza like, Hut. I could do Domino's. I could do Papa John's. I just can't do it. It's too greasy, I think. Ooh, is what I had it Papa is. John's the other day. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. <clears throat> Papa knows what he's doing. Papa's in the Papa's in the house. The day of reckoning other... will come. <laughs> the day of reckoning is upon us. <laughs> the, day, the day of reckoning. I've had 30 to 40 pieces in the last 30 days. The day of reckoning will come. I had an what? obsession with a CC's pizza when I was a kid. I love CC's just because it was one of the few places that still had an arcade. Yeah, but you know what's like, it's kind of like crappy, like cheap pizza, but you know what's legitimately good? The zesty what? pepperoni from CC's Pizza. Oh, Remember no, that? you know what's good at CC's? Yeah, that is good. The macaroni pizza? But the, the, the cheese sticks. Oh, that's some or good cheese bread, cheesy I'm sorry. bread. Yes. I, I will go and make an entire meal of that. I will get like you two just get slices like, of the pizza and I will get like, like nine five. of those. <laughs> they have some good I, desserts too. Like their cinnamon rolls are legit. Cinnamon rolls like, are tasty. Cool. Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> everything other than their pizza is delicious. Their pizza is just like it's not horrible, but it's, it's not. It's just it's a buffet. Mm-hmm. I remember one time though. I don't know if uh, it's still like that, but recently I went back and like they changed their sauce on their pepperoni. Like the marinara yes. sauce. Yes. And I was like, this tastes better. Yeah, I, this I went tastes not too good. long ago with my girlfriend, and I was like, yeah, this is, I'm not going to say quality, but <laughs> it's food. this is acceptable pizza. I can, ooh, but that zesty pepperoni, my dad, like, he can't really eat it much because he had heart surgery, so like, but he, Poor dude. he loved that zesty pizza when I was a kid, that he would pile on the plate. Just like, like nine slices. Yeah, because you know how you could uh, like request like a full pizza for the family? Yeah. He would get that one. <laughs> or like if hey. they brought it out he would like constantly like be he'd be on the hunt he would look and see if they're bringing it out on the buffet when's the, when's the next one <laughs> coming the next out one coming out and he would bring the plate and just pile it on this pizza mine though actually i don't even need a plate <laughs> give me just give me the whole pan it comes on i like the voice he gave my daddy this pizza mine though <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what your dad says Kinda sometimes, yeah. Nah, your dad's actually a super nice dude. Super. I, I, the times that I met him, he was real nice to me. He's pretty chill. He's a pretty chill guy. Uh, but uh, oh, you know what else was really good as a kid? What? I think we've mentioned this before, but Burger King nuggets when they were the yep. crown. Oh, that was some good stuff. Man, I, I was a huge fan of as a child. Uh, Subway's meatball sub. Ooh, I still like it. I cannot stand it anymore. <laughs> it's another thing, but as a kid, I loved it. I had one the other day. I, mm, mm. It's it's weird. Like Stuff that I liked as a kid, food-wise, I don't like now, and stuff that I didn't like, I love. Like, I used to hate Church's Chicken. I oh, love I Church's love, I love Church's Chicken. Oh, man. I don't I think remember the reason I, I liked it as a kid, but I love Church's Chicken. I think the reason I hated it was it was my mom's favorite restaurant. Oh, see, so always... We, went there a lot and i just got burnt out on it but that's, now i can appreciate it i was like this shit good that's how i was with popeyes for most of my life i was like <clears throat> my mom and dad both love popeyes so i'm like oh mm. popeyes chicken again like but i had it recently over i was it. like okay this is a good piece of chicken also chicken talk 
uh, our episode with Jacob, we had the fried chicken discussion. We're going to change our podcast name to Chicken Talk. I have a... I'm, a, <laughs> I'm on a new team now. I am Team Church's Spicy Chicken. Really? I was going to try it last time, but it was for the family, so uh, we just got regular. Uh, I'm going to yeah. I'm gonna have to try it. No, the, like, literally the day after that podcast, uh, Jacob... Maybe not the day after, but very shortly after, he was in town, and uh, he brought some over. He's like, you need to try it. You will change your mind. <laughs> the tr- your I tried spicy? it, and I was like, you're, you're right. My yeah. mind is totally changed. Uh, you know what's really good? Golden chick. What? I actually have grown to... I loved it, and then I hated it, and I am back into liking it. Good. I'm, glad, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you got back, because... I think I, cause I just got burnt out on the strips, because that was the only one I ever got. But I've started getting their actual fried chicken. It's good. It's not bad. It's it good. is not bad at yeah. all. I'm trying to think of like other restaurants that I would always like crave as a kid. Definitely McDonald's Nuggets for sure. Panda Express. Yeah, I was gonna say me. I was not Panda, but I just really liked Chinese food as a kid. It's good. I yeah. still like Chinese food. I really liked teriyaki chicken specifically because uh, the old McCreelis Mall. They had this I Chinese love place. Oh, I miss McCreelis Mall. But they had this Chinese place, and the, my mom would always get the teriyaki chicken for herself, and she would get us Chick-fil-A, which, heck yeah, Chick-fil-A was awesome. But she let me try the teriyaki chicken. I was like, Mom, this is good. What is this? This is what I want. I was like, Mom, what is this? Is this adult food? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to have pubic hair to eat this? <laughs> because I will grow one right I'll- now. <laughs> I will try. But, um, but yeah. Actually, this this goes with this topic. I was going to save it for questions, but uh, Jacob's fiance Jay, asked uh, what our favorite candy as a kid was. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, Nerds Rope. I loved Nerds Rope as a kid. I was anything Reese's. Ooh, Peanut Reese's butter cups. Yeah. Uh, the pieces. Like, I just love And Butterfinger. I loved Butterfinger, but I hated how it got stuck in your teeth. Oh, yeah. It's good, but yeah. Yeah, you got a point there. Like, the uh, taste is... Actually, the taste might be my favorite candy, but it's just such a pain to yeah, eat. Yeah, it's, it's a good taste. Don't they put, like, carrots in it or something? Maybe? I, I remember I eating something like that. don't know. You know what's really good? Uh, I would go to the movies a lot as a kid. Uh-huh. A bunch of Crunch. Yes, Bunch of bunch Crunch. Bunch of Crunch. My mom would just buy boxes of it, and we would snack on it throughout the week. It is so good. I remember some guy, he came up when I, when I worked at the movie theater. Uh, some mm-hmm. guy came up and was like, yeah, can I get the like the mega, can I get the big popcorn and like four boxes of Bunch of Crunch? I was like, okay, he's buying some of the family. He's like, can you put like a, a small layer of popcorn and then, and then give it to me? I was like, sure. So I gave him the bag. Opens one of the bunch of crunch, pours it in. I give him another smaller layer, opens it in, and he does this like four times, and he has a perfect mix of like bunch of crunch and popcorn. This dude is a freaking genius. <laughs> He's living in twenty three seventy one. He's living Dad, in the future. I don't know how I've never thought to do that in a movie theater. I know, and I was like, this that that works. Yeah, I can like that, that. That sounds like it works really well. <laughs> it it looked good. I also I, I love uh, that now. I also, as a kid, really just liked lollipops, like, not, not, no specific flavor or brand, and I still do. Lollipops are just good. They're, they're fun, just to, like, I, I loved ring pops. Ooh, baby, you know what, I, baby bottle pop was pretty good. Baby awesome. bottle Did you pop. ever try, a uh, Chico Sticks? No, I don't, I don't even know what There were these weird orange wafery type stuff, but my cousin showed it, uh, told me about it one time, and I... Those are good. I don't even know what to describe them like, though. Oh, you know what I found uh, when I when I was I think I was te- a teenager, and I had, uh, was like I saw Necco wafers for the first time because that's like an old person mm. candy, and I was like, oh, dude, this is gonna be oh, I've never heard of this. this. Is gonna be awesome. These look like sweet tarts. <sighs> they they're actual I, chalk. I I like them for some odd reason I though. I hate Necco wafers. Like, they don't taste like candy, I think because I had them, like, attachment to them. Oh, mm-hmm. speaking of candy as a kid, I have a, a funny story regarding that about my childhood. Uh, one time... My father beat me with a pack of nerds ropes. But, uh... And I had bruises for years. <laughs> and then he... Re- but, uh, no, um... <laughs> oh. uh, uh, 
my grandparents used to live right down the road from a, a Catholic church that they went to. Mm-hmm. And uh, the nuns there, it was a little covenant, uh, uh, convent, not covenant. <laughs> I was like, Whoa. Uh, little convent. It was a little ark, a little covenant, you know. A uh, little. little convent. And the uh, n- nuns there were real nice to my grandparents. So one day uh, for Christmas, they gave them chocolate, like as a gift from Poland because they were Polish. Mm-hmm. And uh, so my grandma gave me some, and she said I was being a complete nut. Like I was dizzy. I was screaming like they didn't <laughs> know what was wrong with me. Uh, my mom came to pick me up. And she's like, what, what is wrong with him? What did you feed him? And they're like, we just gave him chocolate. She looked at it. It was chocolate stuffed with rum. Chocolate chocolate stuff with what? Rum. Oh. <laughs> so little three-year-old Colton got drunk <laughs> on so chocolate tra- rum. <sighs> That's funny. <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. There was some really good... <laughs> That's a good story. There was some really good, like, uh, like snacks I remember as a kid. You remember uh, those jug of juices? The jugs? Yep, like the Hill Country Fair, Great Value brands. Yeah, those you would go to like a like school picnics or church stuff, and every every it, place you'd go, they'd have them. Yeah, because yeah, they they would be uh they're cheap as hell. And there's like they come, but, it's like a box of a hundred for like two dollars. Yeah, it's <laughs> literally just sugar water with food coloring. But gosh darn it, that stuff was good. I I should buy some soon just to. I wonder what the caloric intake is now, though. I feel like it's, <laughs> it's probably really bad for you. Because uh, I remember when uh, I was uh, I was twenty at the time, and my sec my uh, first semester back at Texas State, where I was living in the dorm, uh, mm-hmm. I got myself like a or I asked my parents to get me a jug or a pack of them. So I just had a, a pack under my bed, and I would just drink them. I remember when you had that pack of Ecto Cool. Oh, when Act when that the, stuff was good. The only good thing to come out of that Ghostbusters remake, they brought back Ecto Cooler. Oh, it was and so tasty. Then it's gone again. I know. Why does Why do they hate us? And Crystal Pepsi's gone again too. That was. Good. I wanted to bring back the blue Pepsi, the berry oh, one. Oh, I thought no one else remembered it. Oh blue no, that berry stuff Pepsi. was amazing. Oh, so I I what? wanted to bring back Coke Black. Yeah. You know what's coming uh, coming out soon uh, in America? What? Coke uh, Coke coffee. I saw that yeah. and I want it to. Ha- I want it now. I want it right now, but because I'm a weirdo and I love that taste together. There was a period like every day I was making my own. It would be a one can coffee, ice, and then a, a six ounce. Wait, I screwed that up. One ounce Coke, uh, one can Coke. Ice and uh, six ounces of coffee. Because mm. I, I like saw the that perfect uh, mixture. I saw that Good Mythical Morning episode where they made it, and uh, it looked good. I'm gonna have to try it. It's a really weird flavor profile. Like, it should not taste good, but for some reason, I really like it. Hmm. Was there any like drinks or sodas that you really liked as a kid? Mountain Dew. I was a Mountain Dew boy. I mean, I think you were because pro- I I knew of Mountain Dew, but when uh, when I mm-hmm. met you, and you told me about it, and that's when I really got into Mountain Dew. Yeah, I I there was a point I had tried every flavor. I was there's actually a new flavor out now that I want to try, but I not going to anytime soon because it's only at Walmart and there's no Walmarts near me. There's re- but it's you like live a, in it's that like a, much of Hick Town that there's just not a Walmart near you. The closest one is, I think, a 25-minute drive. Colton, come back down to the southeast side. Hey, I got an ATV <laughs> right down the road from me. That's, that's good true. enough. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But the new flavor, I think it's called, like, Shark Bite. It's like a yeah, minty there, there's melon. Yeah, like, uh, the, the new Mountain Dew? Yeah. I'm going to have to try it. Where is it's, it? Uh, it? All Walmarts apparently have really? it. Really? It's called but like... only Walmart. <laughs> Shark bite or shark attack, something like that. Ooh. It's a it's a melon Mountain Dew, Ooh. which there's sounds a, amazing. There's a few that I know only like Dollar General gets. Yeah, and I'm like that's they had that random. Uh, they had a pineapple one that was really good at I Dollar General for try. a while. Do you remember uh, when we were at we were in college? Uh, we we walked to the nearest Dollar General to get Mountain Dew lemonade. I think it was. Yep, <laughs> and it was pretty tasty. Was I good. liked it actually. And then there was, was that, like, that gas station that brewed their own cola. 
Oh yeah, yeah, the yellow store. Oh, the yellow store. I, miss I would. The I remember store. being like, that was part of my routine. I'd go to the skate park on the way back home. I'd stop there and get a Gatorade. I uh, and I it went, was always just like the coolest thing. I went back. I don't know if it was just because because uh, it was a few years later. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's because you weren't there. The experience was the same. It just wasn't the same. Magic. No, I, I've actually gone back a few years afterward. I was in San Marcos at the skate park. And I was like, I'm going to go back there for old time's sake. Like, retrace my old, uh, the way the I used steps. to take. And uh, I was like, oh, this is just a gas station that sells. It's a college town gas station where they got, like, pipes and stuff. Yeah. they. I don't think they brew their own cola anymore either. They didn't. I was so yeah. sad. I was like, because that was legitimately, it was like the pure cane sugar. It was good. I guess we could uh we could cl- come to a close with the uh and go into questions soon, but yeah, 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 because this has actually been going on a while. <laughs> but I wanted to ask, do you remember when we first met? Uh kinda, uh, kind of. <laughs> I I remember knowing of you because at first you were in the other colloquium class, and I I would just hear stories about this guy named Derek. Really, I didn't know yeah. that part. What would they say? Like- Oh, not bad. Just like <laughs> you being a dumbass. <laughs> yeah, I remember my early like being in that class. I attempted the funny, but I wasn't the funny. Yep, I was the same at that time. Yeah, and I felt I felt like because I remember you being in there and you were you were the funny and I wasn't, and I felt like you hated me. I don't know why. I saw I was like, oh, he probably doesn't like me very much. Yeah, everybody in colloquium got the wrong read on me. Half of them thought I was a stoner, and that's not true. I don't like smoking weed at all. And at that point in my life, I had never even smoked weed. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, uh, some <laughs> of them like thought I hated them when in reality I liked them a lot. And I had others <laughs> who thought we were best friends that I did not care for. Uh, <laughs> Nobody could I, read me right. I won't, we won't say any names. But uh, oh yeah, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> say anything. But, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, I thought you didn't like me. But then uh, the next was a sophomore. Yeah, uh, maybe junior. Junior, when we started like having more classes together. Yeah, we we became like actual friends junior year, and then senior year is when we, we became, had like, almost every class together. Yeah, we became great friends then. Yeah, I started referring to my classes as our classes when I was when you were nearby. I was like, yeah, yeah you I, remember I, our class? <laughs> I think we had out of seven classes. I think we five? had five together. Yeah, yeah, I want to say that. It was it was a but that was cool though. It was fun, yeah. Like just having a buddy in every class, yeah, almost every class. Yeah, it was pretty dope. Yeah, and this I think the same thing happened in uh, our because uh, me and Colton for the for the audience we were in a GT program called Colloquium, and mm-hmm. basically you would get the it was same, the ultra nerds, yeah, and you would get the same social studies and English teacher in that same little group for your entire yeah, high school all career. All four years, yeah, yeah. I was with, and uh, I was also choir, so I had. Basically, uh, this my two high groups. Teacher, yeah, it was two groups that never changed. Like most yeah. people, every year something different. Every year felt the exact same for mm-hmm. me. Because even the uh, the classes that weren't technically colloquium, all the colloquium kids took. It was like all the AP classes oh, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So it was just with everybody that I knew, and it was it's kind of cool though. It was like being in a secret society or something. Yeah, but even like we ended up getting the same in senior year. We ended up getting the same culinary class. That was fun. That was a I fun that class, place. man. She she was hot. <laughs> yeah, she was. Man. This was. Oh no, she was so hot. <laughs> I was gonna not say the name, but since you said it already, <laughs> you, I mean, Miss <laughs> Miss got jumbled. My bad. The thing is, like, I put po- I post this uh, podcast to Instagram. Well, that's, that's I, not even her name anymore. So she. Oh can, yeah, uh, that's true. She 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 doesn't know. And let's be honest, she's not gonna listen to it. Maybe. I'm going to send it to her. I swear to God, she's going to decide. <laughs> she's going like, oh, wow, like, Derek has a podcast. Wow. I remember that these guys, yeah. Uh-oh. they thought I was hot. Yeah. I, I think she knew that everyone she, thought she was hot. Yeah. She was a young, fit yeah. teacher. I remember she'd wear yoga pants to, to mm. school. I remember Micah being like, you can't do that you to can't teenage do- boys. <laughs> do you remember when she showed us her like high school pictures? Yes. And she had an emo phase. She was like scene queen. She was that raw XD and I was like, uh, could you just like marry me or is that like I'm in I'm in love. I was I like is... asking her when she got engaged how sex in the tent was. <laughs> She's like, it was you, good. You asked 
<laughs> yes, how sex yes. in a tent was. Yeah, because uh, sh- to propose her and her boyfriend had gone on a hiking trip up oh. to the mountain, and uh, I was like, "So how was uh how was the banging afterward?" It's just like real good. <laughs> oh god, I remember that. Uh, we we found out she had like really good taste in music and in movies too. Mm-hmm. Like she she <laughs> played she played a Gorillas video in class. She and not even like a big hit. She played Rhinestone Eyes by Gorillas. She's like, "Oh, I love this song." And I was Remember like, what? she recommended she recommended me the movie uh, Sons of Parva, which is like about a Mormon boy band. It's a <laughs> documentary. I finally watched it. It was really funny. I remember uh, she referenced Airplane. She said, don't call me Shirley one time. Yep. And you're like, you're a cool teacher. You're, like, you're, right. you're awesome. Yeah. Uh, or, oh, remember when she made us limeade and no one else? Yes. And someone came remember- and was like, oh, hey, what's with the lime? She's like, oh, nothing. You remember when we had a Dick's German Sausage Paradise? Dick's German Sausage! <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I did a return to that in, uh, when I went to Palo Alto College. Uh, last oh, week. thank goodness. You could not let it die. It is, it's too perfect. <laughs> it wasn't Dick's, but it was, uh, it was Backdoor Burgers. <laughs> and all the burgers and stuff. All the stuff was sex. All innuendo. Sex. There was a pizza called Her First Time, and it was... Uh, Everything, every red item we had to simulate to stimulate a uh, blood. So we had like ex- extra marinara, red what? peppers, pepperoni, and I think I got an A. Uh, <laughs> professor knew. Professor knew. Oh yeah, professor. My, the I was a speech professor. He's this black dude. He's really cool. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I, I know you said you wanted to do questions. Yeah, I wanted to just end on like a little bit of high school uh, uh, reminiscing. Oh yeah, I, it's a good way. It, it's fun. We we had some fun stories. We really we we got to do like a, a high school story. Oh episode. yeah, like I said, get a maybe do one of those ones where we have a different guest like for twenty minutes at a time. Oh yeah, we'll bring on Jacob, then we'll bring on Robert. Yeah, bring on Kamar, bring on Michael, like just like everybody we know have we'll to just tell cycle her, out their high school story, and then we bring on people we hate. Oh yeah, mm. I, I was about to say names, but I know I was so close. I was like, uh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> and we're probably thinking of the same person. I think I know we are. The thing is, I didn't hate him until everyone told me to hate him. But okay, guys, this is the time where the Hugger Cast answers questions. Uh, remember, uh, I usually put something out either the day of or day before. If you want us, but you can send it early if you want. If you want us to answer your questions at the end of the podcast. Just DM me on Instagram or Twitter at Hugger Derek on both Instagram and Twitter, and we will answer your questions. Or at least do our best to. We'll do our best to try. And if you know Colton in person, just ask him. Yeah, one of the, like, four people who actually know me that listen. <laughs> that just, hit just me up. Hit, hit him up, because he, uh, he's a hermit and doesn't like to people to know what he does on Twitter. Yeah, I'm a... Uh... I'm just. He doesn't want I'm, people to know that he looks up Femboy Hooters on Twitter. Oh, that I'm I'm totally open with. I have a <laughs> Femboy Hooters Stan account. <laughs> Femboy Hooters. That's not gay. I, I promise. Not, not, not at all. There's, it's not gay. There's. I mean, might be a little gay, but like maybe I'm into that. Maybe it's just only like five percent gay. It's ninety ninety five percent straight. It's fine. exactly. Alrighty. It's not gay if you don't take your socks off. Exactly. <laughs> All right, I'll start with the first question. Uh, at intro.george, which shout out to uh, George. Uh, I just edited a YouTube video for him, actually. Oh, okay. And, uh, it's my second video I edited for him. I'll put a link in the description. He has a YouTube channel called George Lozano. That's L-O-Z-A-N-O. Now, he has a video talk. He has a YouTube channel. He makes kind of like vlogger content. but uh, Okay. It has a funny edge to it because I edit it. No, I'm just kidding. It's a, he's, he's a nice guy. I like him. You hide a swastika in every video and don't tell <laughs> and the, people. I do like what PewDiePie's editor did, uh, did where I just put Phineas and Ferb characters in the corner. And just no one knows. It's, it's, fun, to, it's fun to do that sometimes. <laughs> but uh, at intro.george on Instagram asks, if you were to be in any horror movie, what movie would you be in? Um, mm. I already the original know. Halloween. Who would you want to be? I want to be Michael Myers. <laughs> I do, you, do you, can you guess my answer? Can you guess what answer I'd want to be in? Uh, 
I'm trying to think of something completely. You want to be Annabelle? No, I want to be. I want to be the Brightburn kid. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was. I was trying to think of something like that would be the most off of what you would actually god, want. That'd be scary. I don't want to be the freaking. Oh god, I don't yeah, want to be in be, those movies at all. You'd be. That's his name now. Or I'd, I'd want to be in that movie, but I'd want to be an alien from that planet. Oh, just evil Superman, basically. Yeah, essentially. I, w- I really wish they would go into how exactly that works. Like, because on Super, in, in like the world of Superman, on Krypton, aren't they just like normal people? Yeah, it, it's something to do with uh, the, the like gravity, the gravity something. and the air and all that. They're they're just normal, and then Earth, you just super OP. Which doesn't make sense in the movie Man of Steel because isn't Zod like, oh, I want to make Earth like Krypton? I'm like, why? Here you're like, just you're, stay you on f- Krypton. You- I was like, on Earth you can fly around and throw stuff. Why? What? Why would you want to? Yeah. Why would you ruin go that? Back to being normal. That doesn't. I don't. know. Maybe I'm missing something. Let me know if I'm missing something. But, but yeah, I'd want to be in Brightburn. I'd want to be one of the aliens. That'd be yeah, cool. no, I want I want to be Michael Myers because he's he wants cool. To be Michael Myers. He real tall. He real tall. That's our only Instagram question. So I'm gonna go ahead over to Twitter. Okay. At Kuhaku seventy five has six questions for us. Oh damn! Okay. That's my buddy Robert from uh, oh, my job. He usually asks yes. a lot of questions. He's got the good ones. <laughs> Let's power through them. All right. No, I'm, I always like his questions. Those he has some funny. good questions. Yeah. Uh, number one, guilty pleasure game that you couldn't tell anyone. What's like your biggest video game guilty pleasure? Uh, Shadow the Hedgehog. Like, I'll I'll talk about it. I'll tell people, but I, I hate that I <laughs> like not... that game. I uh, hate that I like it. It's not a good game, but it's just kind of fun. Yeah, I... I it's the autist in me. Yep. It always goes back to Sonic and autism somehow. Uh, let's see, what's a game that I, that I'm, like, ashamed, like, yeah, this isn't very good? Mm, maybe, like, the Shark Tale video game? Hey, nothing wrong with that, that, that no game's wrong. a masterpiece. Ain't no wrong with a little bit of Shark Tale. Almost as good as Cory in the house on Nintendo DS. Cory, you a busta. <gasps> or, I don't know why that's in that <laughs> game, like, why did they feel the Corey, need to do that? you a busta. You, you a busta. <laughs> what is, why? <laughs> Who wrote this game? Uh, a genius. He was ahead of the... It was an art piece. <laughs> it was performance art? It, it, it's something. Number two. Second question. What TV show do you wish would come back t- uh, to light either as a rerun or a continuation? Teen Titans. Uh, Honestly, mine is getting answered. What's that? I wanted Beavis and Butthead to come back. Oh, yeah. It's coming, it's coming back, back again. again. Like, it came back for, like, when we were a in high school. season or two. Yeah, and... Those seasons were still really funny. I just remember the they one, made fun of Jersey Shore. Yeah, the new one looks like it's going to be funny too, so I'm I'm hoping it's good. Because I, I love Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> I never got in. I don't think I was allowed to watch it. I, I need to watch more of it now. Yeah, it's, 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 it's stupid 16-year-old boy humor, but I'm still <laughs> a stupid 16-year-old boy at heart. So Also, uh, if they brought... Because the, the, the creator of Kids Next Door has shown interest in, like, wanting to continue it. Oh, uh, that would be cool. You want to do something called Galactic Kids Next Door? Is that, like, set in outer space? Yeah, there's, like, an out, there's like a, a universe Kids Next Door of, like, different planets and something like that. And, like, number one is, like, an adult, I think, but he's still, like, part of the Kids Next Door. I would, I would watch the hell out of it. That sounds way better than Rugrats All Grown Up. Oh, God. That was a bad show. It was... I was so excited for it as a little kid. and then I watched it. I was like, this is... It's teen garbage. It's a tro- And even the show, aren't they only supposed to be like 11 or 12? They're not even supposed to be that old. Because Angelica yeah. just turns 13. Yeah, I think... But the they look one... like adults! <laughs> it's like they got anime logic where like the yeah. like the JoJo characters are like 15 or 16. But yeah, they look like yeah, they're like, like the... 70. They have all these like dating problems and stuff that like yeah, you'd I'm expect like, like a sixteen year old to have, and they're supposed to be eleven and twelve. It's like what? I think they should have made them like actual teenagers. That would have made more sense. Yeah, it would. It would still would have sucked, but at least it would have made. It would have made sense. sense. Yeah. Ugh. And then also, uh, the creative courage of Cowley Dog has shown interest in wanting to make more episodes. Ooh, that would be good. That would be cool. 
And then I keep hearing about an Animaniacs uh, continuation about them coming back. But, really? Yeah. That show is actually fantastic. I, I wasn't allowed to watch it as a kid because my parents thought it was weird. <laughs> but, like, watching it now, it's a it's, really good it's show. It's just good satire. It, the, the writing's fantastic. Yeah. The animation's really good. The music's on point. Like, And I, I'd want to see what they satirize now. Yeah, honestly. Because they make fun of, like politicians and stuff like that in the old ones i like watch uh, them like make fun of donald trump yeah they they would have a field day and he would hate it yeah and what i mean because like what do we have making fun of donald trump right now like that show our snl our snl or our cartoon president god that show's mm. so unfunny that's that's honestly it's easy to hate on him but there's not many funny like parodies of him and stuff like it's all just yeah and, orange man bad. Uh-huh, or, Trump's fat. Trump's orange. Trump says a dumb thing. Trump's irreverent. Like, like there, there's no good. Like there was great Obama jokes. Yeah. They, or uh, even like when uh Bernie Sanders was running and they had Larry David on S. That was just Larry funny. Sanders. It was hilarious. Yeah. For some reason, Trump just does not lend himself to funny stuff. Yeah. Like he's just easy to make fun of, but I think everyone's just done it. Yeah, and it's. It's all the same jokes over yeah, and over, and it's all like just you the said. Same jokes, though. Trump's orange. Trump's fat. Ha ha. He dumb. He orange. He fat. That's that's it. I miss Obama oh, yeah. jokes. I do too. I, I just watched the video where he's trying to dunk the cookie and it's too <laughs> yeah. big for the glass. Thanks Obama. Thanks Obama. Thanks Obama. All right. The next one is uh, number three. What is your number one childhood movie of all time? Uh... Is it Child Spaceballs? Really? Okay. I loved, loved Spaceball. I think I mentioned this before, but as a kid, uh, Men in Black. Men in Black is also a good one. I like how, like, even though they're family movies almost, they're not your typical what you they're think not like kid a kid movies. movie. Yeah. I, I, I ended up just because, I think just because of my, my parents, I ended up just seeing them really early. Honestly, that probably shaped your humor the way it is, though. Yeah, just seeing stuff like that, like Seinfeld or Everybody Loves Raymond when I'm, like, nine. Uh, I watched the episode of Seinfeld just last night where George gets the massage from the man. Oh, and he, like... <laughs> it moved! <laughs> it moved. <laughs> One of my favorite uh, scenes is the... Uh, it's just it's a very short scene, but a, uh, a telemarketer calls Jerry, and he's like, Hey, would you like to subscribe to... Uh, or some 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 and he's like oh hey uh, i'm kind of busy right now can i get mm-hmm. your number and call you later and he's like no we're not allowed to do that and jerry's like oh you wouldn't want people calling you at home he's like yeah he's like well no you know how i feel and he just <laughs> hangs up <laughs> yeah it's, and that show is so good believe it or not ah we gotta have a seinfeld episode i would i would love that just like top 10 episodes or something or just the part where someone calls Jerry and he's like, would you like a subscription to the New York Times? And he just goes, yes, and then hangs up the phone. I love the uh, the human fund. Oh, they have, a sh- they have a lot of shirts like of Seinfeld now, which I'm really happy about. They have a human yeah. fund shirt. They have these pretzels are making me thirsty. They have a, uh, they just have a lot of, they have a Del Boca Vista like resort. Jacob has a, his girlfriend as a gift got him like a big box set that has a replica puffy shirt. Oh god! I've seen they sell the puffy shirt. I love that. I want to be a so cool. All right. <laughs> but uh, your your childhood movie was Spaceballs, and mine was Men in Black. Yes. Okay. Uh, number four. What movie comes to mind when you were a kid at Christmas? That's a good question. Uh, Christmas Home Story. Alone. Yeah, Home Alone two. Yeah, not Home Alone two, but Home Alone also. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Home Alone 1 and 2 for me, actually. I love both of I just, them. I just didn't watch Home Alone 2. I don't know. I just never did. It's uh, it's it's not definitely not as good, but it's not bad. It's Tim Curry. Have a lovely day. And, and as a little kid, I didn't realize it was a bad movie. I loved Home Alone 3 as well. Is that They switch kids, right? Yeah, it's it's about an entirely different kid. Mm. But uh, I like the music in that one for some reason. They all have a good score. They're all scored pretty well, but uh, see, and T- T- a Christmas story. Yeah, TBS would Christmas play story? their their twenty four hours of a Christmas story. Yeah. <laughs> yep. What, yeah. what other Christmas movies can I think of? The live action Grinch. I actually guilty pleasure. It's 
It's got some good laughs in it. Yeah, there's just some, like, jokes that are just like, huh. They put this in here. Yeah, like, it's... Like same the, thing with that Cat in the Hat movie. Yeah, like, the Cat in the Hat some... movie is wild. It's just a very odd movie. I love it. Like, I used to hate it, but I've, I've flipped, yeah, and I it's... love it now. Yeah, I think I think the because uh, it's bad, but like the ironic value of it kind of just it's went worth out. it. And then the memes like like cat in the hat with the bat, just like yeah, honestly, <laughs> it's it's like getting up there with like B movie of meme material. Yeah. Or just uh, what do you wh- what would you say has been memed more B movie or Shrek? Ooh, that's a tough. one. That's tough because like I don't think B movie has as many diverse memes as Shrek. But it had a lot of, like, readings of the script, which is a lot. Yeah, just, like, different ways to, uh... <laughs> I remember the B-movie script read while yelling, You like jazz? <laughs> but, uh, Christmas... Any other Christmas ones that you watched a lot? Uh, I like the original Santa Claus with Tim Allen. But... I never got to watch those movies. Don't watch the rest of them. The first one's actually still a good... You mean I shouldn't watch Santa Claus 3, The Escape Clause? Oh, dude, it's... I, I want to be funny and, like, ironic. I can't even do that. It's just it's bad. Just bad. <laughs> uh, I watched a lot of those uh, those stop-motion animated specials. Oh, I, I love those. They're creepy as shit looking, but I love them. Yeah, now that I was like... I, I remember them looking better, but as uh, looking at them now, I'm like, these characters don't move. Why don't they That's... move? <laughs> That's why I love it, though. It's just unnerving. Is it uh, Rankin Bass? Is the uh, the company that made it? Oh, okay. Yeah. I had, oh, I had no idea what, what their name was. You know what else? Uh, uh what was Jack Frost. Yes. The one where the kid's dad dies and becomes a snowman. Yep. Yeah, I watched that movie. It's not a good movie, but I watched it a lot. I just I remember seeing it and reminding me of the uh, nesty, cool to the, cool to the touch or whatever those oh. old ad logos were. Yeah, th- those are those. I saw that logo for the first time in like 15 years a few weeks ago, and it just I watched unlo- a unlocked bunch the of those commercials where yeah. the snowman would melt, drink the uh, the nest tea, and come back. I remember the the one where with the uh, the kid is the snowman, and he would eat the Campbell soup too, mm-hmm. and he'd melt. Uh, the the snowman would melt on and just be the little kid. I like. I love. Some. I love Christmas. I, I love Christmas, uh, too. Christmas, just the few months, like, from October to December are probably some of my favorite months. Except Christmas music, because I work in retail, so that... Even so, I worked at the movie theater, we had the Christmas. I would I would be the one that's like, hey, um, uh, hey, uh, Mr. Smith, uh, it's getting, it's getting, it's in November, it's time to change the station. I was that guy. You are the worst type of human being. <laughs> I, everyone else hated it, and I was like, it's my time. <laughs> I, I... I can't do. It. I love. I love Halloween stuff. I love spooky, and I love everything about Christmas, but the music. We had a Halloween station too that would play like some some like uh, Nightmare Before Christmas and like. Some they, of that. they need to fully embrace and start playing like Misfits. Stuff. Yeah, play like horror punk. That'd be cool. Yeah, like the Cramps Misfits. Mm-hmm. That that would be awesome. Yeah, I guess we'll go to the next question. But <laughs> yeah, I, I love Christmas. Number five. What childhood game would you want? Um, a mastered, I think it's trying to say remastered. Would you want remastered? Tony Hawk's Underground. Yeah, Tony Hawk's Under- Underground would be cool. Uh, a lot of the stuff I wanted remastered are, is getting it. Has or been, Has yeah. got it. <laughs> like, I didn't expect SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom at all. Yeah, was, my girlfriend actually finally just bought that. She's loving it so far. You know what? Did I tell you what happened? I bought, uh, I pre-ordered it. And I picked it up, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, uh, you had the online copy, right? I was, or the digital copy, right? I was like, no. They're like, yeah, you have the digital and for Xbox. What the <sighs> hell? And I was like, I don't think I did that. I'm pretty sure I got physical for PS4. I, and, I know. Maybe I could understand it. Maybe if I screwed up the digital, but I know I would not say Xbox because I do not own an exactly. Xbox. Exactly. Uh, but I ended up, it was around my brother's birthday, so I gave it to him. I was like, here you go. Oh, he has an Xbox? Yeah. I don't, it's, oh, okay. it's kind of like we sharing it, but he mostly plays the Xbox. I mostly play the PlayStation. You have better taste. Exactly. Uh, but I'm trying to think of something that needs to be remastered because I would say Ratchet and Clank, but there was a remaster and a new game coming out. So, mm-hmm. uh, maybe Banjo. Banjo would be cool, but I, I, I didn't play it as a kid. Uh, Sly Cooper, uh, would be cool if they did it, but I wouldn't want them to ruin the original art style. 
Yeah, because even though it looks a little dated, like it still looks. It's a good. very stylized game. Uh, uh, hmm. Maybe like Jack Two, or the Jack and Daxter would be cool. Yeah, because none of those have been remastered, have they? Yeah, they've been re-released, but I don't think they've been remastered. No. Uh, I was I would say Spider Man Two, but it's basically the PS4 Spider Man game. Yeah, not the same story, but yeah, it's essentially yeah. Um. Trying to think, what did I play as a lot? I guess, uh, yeah, I guess I'll go with Jack, just Jack and Daxter games. I think that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good answer. Uh, number six, <clears throat> the last question from him: What is the best memory you have with each category being games, TV, or, and movies? Some, uh, of, some of the best game memory, gaming memories, are playing Super Smash Brothers with like friends, like Jord, our friend Jordan and Robert, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, my best game memory is a. Uh... Jacob's house playing Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, mm. eating Little Caesars, and then uh, he had a cheap Walmart skateboard. Like, we could probably do this, and that was the first time I ever tried skateboarding. <laughs> I remember, and I was garbage, but it is a precious memory. I remember a lot of times I would get games as rewards for doing well in school. Mm-hmm. So I'd be my like, parents did that too. Like report card, give me those A's. I'm like, here's the A's. And I remember my mom, uh, she's like, I got a surprise for you. And she got me NFL 2K5. Oh. Hey, you're like, mommy, I love you. Mommy, I love you. Yeah. Or she would just like take me to GameStop and be like, here, just pick some. And I'm like, cool. Do you remember just going to GameStop and sitting at the demo kiosk playing yep. like while your parents? Because they're, the one I went to, there was the GameStop right next to a Payless. So my mom would go look at shoes and I would just. Go play, play video games for like 30 minutes. Is that the one on Fantastic. Military? Because like, that'd be the one that I... Uh, because there used to be a Payless there. Yeah, that one and also the one on Rigsby. Uh, mm-hmm. They both yeah. had that same thing where they were yeah, next Payless to each and, other. Uh, that's, that's such a weird combination. Now they know that, their market. Now that I'm going to... Because I was a kid, I, I was like, Mom, give me the cool Jordans from uh, Academy. I don't want that Payless. Mm-hmm. Now that Payless is gone and I'm an adult, I want Payless back. Uh, I, <laughs> I still, I, I like getting like mid grade. They're durable, good quality, but they don't so like, like, kill so like the some bank. like some like Skechers or something. Uh, actually, I like Vans. Okay. Yeah. Because you could, you could get some types of Vans for pretty good price. I'm just not a big shoe person. I just don't, I don't buy or shoes Ooh, a lot. Maybe, maybe when we have Kamara on, he could school you on that because he is a sneaker head. He's black. And he's, <laughs> he's taught me a lot about shoes. What's uh one of some of your best one of your best like TV memories? Uh, uh <laughs> just watching SpongeBob with my little sister. Oh, like I I don't know why it's it, it's just happy memory though. Just sitting on the couch and laughing together. Yeah, at that'd it. be me and my brother too. Like whenever the Band Geeks episode would come on, <laughs> that would ours be- was a the Jellyfish Jam up. Ep- oh, that's a good episode. Or I remember when Ed and Nettie was ending and me and my brother caught the Ed and Nettie's big picture show was the, the oh. last movie that the TV movie that was made. And me and my brother mm-hmm. sat down when it was on and watched it. Yeah, those, those types of experiences are nice. Like it, there wasn't no fighting or anything with your sibling. It was just enjoying just the chilling, moment. Yeah. Vibing. <laughs> vibing when they do be vibing real hard they, though they do be vibing says, dang kids watching Ed and Nettie big picture show they do be they vibing do be vibe. they do be vibing though they really do I love I love saying <laughs> that and I like hate that. that I love saying it or like I saw one was like alligator receptionist what the heck the alligator receptionist dang he do be scheduling meetings though he do <laughs> just like stuff like that it doesn't it's make any so sense <laughs> dumb, but I love it and then what's like some of your favorite like I guess movie theater like movie memories? I remember uh, going to see Men in Black two, and uh, there's a part in the beginning where the alien first comes to Earth, the bad alien, and it mm-hmm. uh, it's it's like a jump scare. It like screams at a dog, and I had Skittles, and like I I jumped, and some of my Skittles fell on the floor. Oh, that is sad. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and I remember. A lot of times, my we would go to Walgreens before a movie and just load up on candy. <laughs> yeah, that's how you do it. That's I'm how trying you to think. It. My be- probably my grandparents took me to see Spy Kids 3D. Oh. Now I realize that that movie is garbage, but, but as a ten year old, I loved it. I still kind of love it, even though it is garbage. 
Remember the guy? Uh, the guy? Wasn't it Elijah it was Eli- Wood? It was a young Elijah Wood. He was the guy. But then he died. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. That's probably my... Or seeing Recess as well. Oh, I remember when... Uh, you know what? My my mom would take me a lot of, like, the anime stuff. My mom took me to see Pokemon, the first movie in theaters. She took me oh, to see... Oh, you lucky. My mom hated it, so I was not... My mom actually liked Pokemon for some reason. She liked Meowth. She thought Meowth was cute <laughs> and funny. Like, my mom had nothing with me against me, like, playing it or watching it, but... She just hated watching it herself, so she's like, I'm not going to take you to see it. <laughs> she t- My mom took me to see Yu-Gi-Oh! the movie. Oh, man, that is and, mom uh, of the year right there. And uh, <clears throat> you would get a card, like a special card when you went to the theater. I, I love when theaters do stuff like that. We did that, uh, the theater I worked at did that for Detective Pikachu. We gave out uh, special Pokemon cards. Did you steal ticket. a bunch of them? I wanted to, but no, I didn't. I wanted one so bad. Did you not get even one? No, I asked if we could have one. They're like, no, they're for the guests. I was like, ah. I will pay to watch the movie, though. <laughs> I should have just paid to watch the movie and then and then gotten one. I'm really sad. But yeah, but yeah, just going, going. I just loved going to the movies. Like so, any the- my first experience going, I remember was going to see. I think I've told this story on the podcast. We're going to see Black Knight starring Martin Lawrence. Mm-hmm. And I was like, a Mom. Stone Cold classic. I was like, Mom, that's because I don't know. For some reason, the 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 words "Black Knight" scared me, and I, saw, I thought it was a horror movie about a knight that kills people. And I was like, Mom, that <laughs> movie sounds kind of scary. I don't want to go. It's got it all that. And then I started crying, and then my mom showed me. Well, she's like, Look, look at the poster, and it was Martin Lawrence and like a in like a a sports jersey with a bunch of jewelry, just chilling. She's like, Look, that doesn't look scary, right? I was like, No, it's terrifying. <laughs> Black man, ah! <laughs> it's like dad, but worse. Yeah, it's like dad, but more jewelry. Yeah. But actually, I don't, I don't know. I need to watch it again to see if it's actually good or ironically good. I've, I've heard it's. I think it's like that ironically good. Yeah, some parts were still kind of funny. Yeah, Martin Lawrence was pretty funny back in the day. Yeah, he was a big deal. He just doesn't do stuff that much anymore. R.I.P. Yeah. He's not even dead, but R.I.P. We'll R.I.P. his career. R.I.P. his career. All right, that's uh, it for Robert's questions. Still got a few more, so let's... Uh, okay, yeah, power through them. Power through. At ZTCBITW on Twitter asks, Who is your hero, and what is your biggest fear? Um, Ooh. Rodney Mullen is my biggest hero. Okay. And my biggest fear is maggots. Mm-hmm. My biggest fear is spiders. I've mentioned my massive arachnophobia many times on the podcast. Uh, I guess, let's see, I'm trying to think. I'll, it'd probably be a comedian. It'd Dave probably, Chappelle. Pro, uh, I didn't watch a lot of Dave Chappelle as a kid. Chris Rock. Uh, Chris Rock's probably my hero. Yeah, I, I hope you wouldn't watch Dave Chappelle as a kid because he is not. <laughs> I rem- he's hilarious, but he's not child friendly. <laughs> I remember Jordan watched Dave Chappelle as a kid. He watched Chappelle's show. Our friend Jordan. It's, it's so funny. I love Chappelle's show. <laughs> but Chris Rock. Chris Rock is Chris a good Chris Rock. One. And uh, a Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac was hilarious. The Bernie Rest- Mac show was <laughs> when really he went, good. I'm so sad he died. Rest- he died way too early. Like, we lost him way too early. He had a, yeah, he had a lot left in the tank. Yeah, especially because, like, on the Bernie Mac show, when he'd, like, sit and, like, talk to the audience, he'd be like, listen here, America. I'm like, ah, oh, that's my guy. <laughs> this guy cool. This I want him cool. to be my dad. I want, I want, he's like the cool uncle, you know? Cool. Actually, that is the best way to put it. Bernie Mac cool was, your, and you, uh, uh, he was in Transformers. Uh, sorry, Bernie Mac, but Bernie Mac show was still awesome. <laughs> yeah, very, very good. At Dman Seventeen on Twitter writes in, "If you could have any Pokemon, which would it be? Me personally, I'd be riding a, a Rayquaza into the skies, and then to di- to then die once I reach orbit due to a lack of oxygen." <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you. This is a clear cut answer. You got to go shuckle because you don't fuckle with the shuffle. <laughs> I can't. I can't argue with that. Yeah, I want. I want to shuckle just just so I could say that to people. You know what? I want. Uh, I want a. I want an Arcanine so I can ride it. Hey, that would actually be pretty. That would be dope. Yeah. 
Uh, only because uh, when I booted up Pokemon Go, that was one of my fr my first Pokemon I caught was a Growlithe, and it's my most po it's one of my most powerful the uh, Arcanine. So it's got a special place in your heart. It really does. Only from a few years ago, but yes. Hey, that don't matter when it got there as long as it's there. Arcanine is just so adorable. What about you, Colton? Uh, a shuckle. Oh, okay. <laughs> like I, I'm serious. You with that. do I, not I'm keeping it a you shuckle. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, at ASAP Deltron on Twitter, one of the new fans of the podcast. What he, up? He asks Kendrick or J Cole. He says he goes Kendrick. with Kendrick easily. He, I, I feel like that's a little bit harder for me because I do like J Cole a lot. I, I I like J Cole, but Kendrick is like next level. Kendrick is for definitely this generation of rappers. Yeah, like in in fifty or so years, he's gonna definitely still be remembered. Like, J. Cole's stuff is good, but To Pimp a Butterfly is, like, legitimately... Yeah, t -pabs. Like, that is, that is rap, like, required listening. Even Good Kid, Mad City is, like, one of my favorite yeah. hip-hop albums of all time. Damn is really good. Like, I, I think Kendrick's gonna have a longer-lasting impact. Yeah, I wonder what he's gonna do next. Heavy metal album. I, rem I remember he said something about wanting to do, like, a rock-inspired album. I would love that. That'd Go the awesome. iced tea route, just start a, <laughs> a metal band. But, but don't sing, kind of just like yell. He, Kendrick yeah. can yell, so. He, he, actually, I could see that working for Yeah. Me. It'd be kind of like a, like when Denzel Curry covered Rage Against the Machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it seems like aggro rap's coming back into style, so I could see like mm -hmm. people into hip-hop actually getting into like hard. I, I remember uh, like a few years back like when Trap was getting really big. And I was like, mm -hmm. man, I really hope this ends soon. And I still don't think it's ending. It's it's at least dying down. I think it's, it's not dying ending, a little but... bit. But although honestly, like I could, I understand its place better now because so, like I listened to a little bit of uh, Travis Scott. Mm -hmm. Like that's it's good vibe in music. Like I was listening to Highest in the Room. Like you can yes. really vibe to that song. Yeah, you just kind of put it on and like I'm gonna be me. Room. I'm gonna do me. Yeah. Or sicko mode. Ooh. <laughs> that no, I'm still mad because they uh the Super Bowl. Oh, uh, they really, really had a good chance to do something really cool, and they just didn't. They in just fact, didn't. they did it the worst possible way they could by yep. teasing us and then not actually acting on it. I I, I like that uh Squidward says in the, during the Super Bowl a talent that needs no introduction, and then mm. Travis Scott comes out. I was like, I don't think so. I really yeah, don't. At that, at that point in time, I actually didn't know who Travis Scott was, so I was like... I knew who I he was, an and I, I knew Sicko Mode, and that's what they, they brought it out with. But the thing is, they could have literally just had Adam Levine sing, like, 30 seconds of Sweet Victory. Just the chorus, and that would have been enough. People, yeah, would have gone <gasps> nuts. Yeah. But NFL does not care about us. They don't care about Spongebob. George Bush doesn't care about black people. That's one of my favorite moments <laughs> in human history. <laughs> he wasn't I wrong. go back and watch that like every other week. And then, like, yeah, like uh, like Mike Myers just looks over at him. He looks then, so uncomfortable. And then he has it, it cuts no to, idea what to It cuts do. to Chris Tucker, and he's just looking off to the side and then looks at the screen and goes, uh, yeah, so we're, we're collecting money. Uh. <laughs> he's just got that, like, the fuck? He's like, hmm. Uh, we got a, we got a, our favorite, my friend Zach, uh, from, from my job at okay. Choppa underscore Zachary coming in with another zinger. Okay. He's the one that asked the, uh, the Bible ET, man. Yeah. Bible man and ET questions. Who's your favorite little rascal and why? Gotta be Buckwheat. Uh, Buckwheat. I'm going Spanky, but it's gotta be the original Spanky from the, the old shorts when he was a little kid. Cause he was actually adorable. The only ones I know by name are are Buckwheat and well Alfalfa. Alfalfa. I don't, I don't know the I other ones. To, I had I had like it was a twelve DVD collection of all the old, sca the old uh, skits. Oh wow! They're legitimately they hold up. They're still funny. The Wild I'll Man from Bernio is one of the funniest. Th it's a little racist now, Ooh. but it is it's funny. I'll have to check it out. I, I definitely recommend. I I just picked Buckwheat because he's black. Yeah, Buckwheat. Buckwheat. Thank, I love Eddie Murphy's that, uh, Buckwheat. Yeah, I was going to say that SNL sketch. That once, twice, three times a matey. 
<laughs> but yeah, I but like yeah. Buckwheat because o- of the way he speaks. OG Spanky. OG Spanky for me. OG Spanky. Okay. And uh, I believe the last question, at Black underscore Texan on Twitter. Oh, right. In, my favorite game series as a kid was Sly Cooper. This is my brother, so. Yes. <laughs> uh, my question is, which uh, games out of the series do is, like, my favorite? I would say Sly Cooper 3, because it's the only one that doesn't have spiders in any of the levels. I'm going to say that, too, because I never played them, but I trust Derek's opinion. It is a really good game. A lot of yeah, people, I, it's a, actually I, a big debate in the Sly Cooper fandom, whether 2 or 3 is better. I I want to play them, because they were PlayStation only, right? Yeah, PS2 only. Yeah, that's why I never got to. They did a re- I should download an emulator soon. They did a remaster on PS3, if you, and so I think, I think you could play them on PS now, I want to say. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll splurge and actually get that for because I've never used it. Mm-hmm. Oh, he writes in also that it uh, Sly Cooper deserves a PS5 remaster. I, agree. I I bet I bet it'll happen. Oh, uh, if they do a Sly Cooper game for PS5, that I, would just I, I would die. I feel like Sony's hitting everything so right right now that they got to do it. They really are. They're like one of the guys in the pornos that's got like the strokes and he's just going and he's hitting yeah, he, the, he's, he's hitting got it figured stride. out. He's like, mm, he's got the pelvic thrust correctly. And I feel like uh, uh, Microsoft is just like that guy in the corner. He's uh, no, it's the guy that comes home drunk at like three in the end <laughs> and tries to do it. And, like <laughs> it gets the job done, but it's not elegant and it's not that enjoyable. No, my, Microsoft is the stepdad in the closet watching like the the real man do the work. Uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> do you remember what you told me that your favorite porn video about a? Uh, the guy watching the lesbian girls and he's the black dude. Oh, yeah. If you need a real dick, let a brother know. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, he keeps saying it through the whole video and at the very end. She's like, shut the fuck up, you <laughs> dick tiny. <laughs> Every now and then it just cuts to him. He just, the camera just it, pans over. It was the strangest video. That That's was, hilarious. That was funny, though. I need to find need a real it. Dick, let a brother know. You let a brother know. <laughs> Except he he does not say brother, but he says he says the what? gamer word. Yeah, the, yeah, the gamer. Word. He says the, I've heard it referred to as the gamer word. <laughs> I hate that, but I also love it. It's great, the gamer word. Uh, alrighty. Well, thanks uh, everyone who decided to listen to this madness. Yeah, yeah. this is a. I kind of like this episode. This was, there was a no very rhyme or reason to it, but it was. It's a very comfortable episode. Yeah, this is this is the get cozy with the hunger cast. Get to know us a little better. It's a fireside chat. Uh, yeah. Everything's gonna be okay. We promise. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, if yeah. you if you liked what you heard, uh, make sure to subscribe on the YouTube channel, Hugger Derek. Uh, oh, Colton, I don't know if you got my text. Yeah. Uh, we're on Apple Podcasts this whole time, and I just didn't. Yes, know. I saw that. So we had no, no idea. Yep. I wonder I wonder if anybody listens on Apple Podcasts. We do. It's mostly Spotify and like four listeners from Apple Podcasts. I'm going to go listen to an Apple Podcast now and <laughs> give us a five-star rating just to boost. So, yeah, uh, we're on Apple Podcasts, guys. Make sure to rate five stars on Apple Podcasts. Uh, follow please. and <laughs> Please. Follow and we'll like. We'll give you all- shout-outs. We will. We'll do it. We promise. We're not lying. Uh, follow and, and heart on Spotify. Because that helps as well. Share with your friends. Tell your family, your cousins, your grandparents. Shop uh, give us money. That's <laughs> always great. <laughs> you could send us PayPal. No, uh, strap your grandparents down and make them listen to this podcast. Force feed it to their ear holes. Look, Grandpa, there's a black man. Ah, a black man's voice is coming into my ear. Ah. <laughs> Just like one came into my wife's. Years ago, and that's why. I hate. Do you think that's why a lot of like old racist white men are the way they are? They are just man. Real quick before we end the episode, I remember that was the only time I've ever used heard the n word used in Again. almost in a complimentary way. There was this <laughs> real old white dude that shops at H E B, and he was talking about a, a black guy he used to work with, and for some reason he was talking to this uh these Hispanic dudes, and uh. 
he was saying something. They're like, yeah, we got big dicks or whatever. He's like, yeah, but it ain't like that N word dick that he's got on him. He's like, Whip it out, Robert. <laughs> so, like, it wasn't an insult. It was like, it was like a, a compliment. Yeah, I and mean, he had a big pee pee, but. Yeah. That was. That's great. That was bizarre. I want to be that old man's friend. He's funny. He's he's so <laughs> old awful, but I love him. Old and racist. <laughs> yeah, but not even. I wouldn't say racist. He just hates everybody. I can. He's roll. one of those. I can rock old with that. Man. Yeah, I can rock with that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yes, uh, thank you for listening, guys. Uh, we uh, once again, I'd like to thank all of our. Uh, Radio Public radio, listeners. Yep, Radio Public, our favorite website. No, I was looking on uh, Anchor and how it distributes to every like website. I've got a few. I've got to thank a few of our other listeners on. Uh, give me one sec here. Thanks to our listeners on Breaker, Overcast, and Pocket Casts as well. No, those guys are subhuman. Radio Public Master Race. <laughs> radio Public. I don't even know what these are. Uh, apparently, people use them. <laughs> I remember a few years ago, a friend of mine was like, tell me about Anchor. He's like, yeah, Anchor is uh, coming up. It's pretty cool. And now I use it. It's always that serendipity type stuff. Serendipity doodah. Zippity doodah. What? Zippity day. Okay. Disney <laughs> won't... a lot of racial things in this episode. <laughs> Disney won't re-rele- re-release... Uh, the, what's, what's the name of the movie? A Song of the South. Re-release of the Song of the South, you cowards. <laughs> Put it on Disney+. Plus. Unedited. We want it as racist as possible. <laughs> the thing is, uh, in that movie, they never specifically say the word slave. Yeah. But, like, the black people, like, go over a hill and then come back at nighttime. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's a, it seems like a strange movie. I do kind of want to watch it because yeah. we're not supposed to. Exactly. It's like Birth Tell of a Nation. Tell me not to, and that makes, makes me want to do it even more. It's like watching Birth of a Nation or, like... Any Adam Sandler movie in the mid two thousands. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks. Those are about the same level. Exactly. Thanks for listening. Just make sure you share. Oh yeah, uh, make sure to subscribe to George's channel. Uh, I I'm pretty much his his editor. So you support Big him. Boy you job. Su- yeah, you support him. You're supporting me. I'll put a link in the description. Colton, is there anything you like to plug or say? Um. Uh. <laughs> no, because I can't say that. I was about to say something, but I was I about can't to say, say the N word, but I can't say it. No, it wasn't that, but it was something else that I can't say. <laughs> uh, make sure to follow Colton at. I'm just kidding. Uh-huh. At uh, at work, Big PP Man Three Thousand. <laughs> make sure to follow Colton in person. Follow him to his house. Find out where I work, <laughs> do some sleuthing, and uh, just stalk me. It'll, just it'll boost him. my confidence. Just watch him while he's stalking the cabbages. I'll do, I'll do it all sexy for you. I'll poke my butt out real nice. And with the cabbages and just rub carrots all over your nipples. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> have a good night, everyone. Thanks for listening.